Your additions. Uh, there will be two additions after the uh, public yes. meeting. Okay. And so now we're going to discuss the 10 year town plan. Todd, do you want to open the discussion? Uh, sure. We've had two town plan hearings, uh, select board of trustees. And uh, I think the focus tonight is the changes. The select board made some changes, and the trustees also had a couple changes. And since that time, we've also updated the town plan to speak to updated facts for the Morristown Corners Water Corp and the Morristown Cemetery Association. If anyone hasn't seen that, feel free to grab one pass around. No, that's That's just the pages, the changes. So there are five pages of changes. Select board has in their packet, pages 12. 19, 26, and 51. I'm happy to speak to those and are going to go through them, Bob? Great, or? yeah, go through them. All right, so page 12, I updated some language on the truck climbing line language for Shootsville Hill for Jimmy Brewster. On page 19, we added a sentence about the adequacy of the village offices on Elmore Street for the future for the next 10 years. On page 26, these are Morristown Corners Water Corp changes. Uh, added a little more information on their system. And on page 51, we're talking about um, there's revised language regarding mobile home parks. That should be it. So not, not a lot on the docket, so to speak. And again, these are the changes made since the last select board meeting additional changes to the plan. Is there any comments or questions about those items, those pages? So, I have comments, but I can do it in whatever time will be live. So Todd, I was wondering um, if you could address, like, the town plan is something we're required to do if we want downtown designation and funding to go along with that. What's the responsibility from the like our town plan and the state. Does the state look at this for grants and for funding? You're not required to have, responsible? You're not required to have a town plan. You're required to have a town plan if you want to, if you want to have zoning. So we need sure. a town plan. You don't need a town plan for state purposes, and your town plan can pretty much say what you want to do until you want to enter state programs. For example, if you want to be part of the downtown designation program, the state has certain control over parts of your town plan. You're seeing that tonight with the Trailer park language, for example. We have to be accepting of trailer parks if we want to have a designated downtown. That's one of the things the state does require. There's no requirement for us to be a designated downtown. We're choosing to do so. But when you choose to try to get state money or state programs, the state obviously wants some control over what your plan says. And that's kind of the give and take you're seeing with that change tonight. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. The town plan really acts as when you look at the back of the town plan, and I had a conversation with a member of the select board earlier, there's the objectives in the back of the town plan, all the things that are underlined and italicized, so they're really found in the last uh, four or five pages of the plan. That's really a punch list. That's going to be the planning council's to-do list for the next handful of years, at least two to three years, on open items we want to see accomplished and things they'll work towards. So it really sets the agenda for the planning realm of the, uh, of the town government. And again, this is a planning document. It's not a select board document. The select board has to prove it. Uh, but this came through years of meeting with the planning council, and then the uh, the to do list is basically what they're going to do in the next two to three years based on what's in the plan, what's in that uh, implementation chapter. And and also things can happen in town that are not in this town plan. Of course, town plan is a living document. It, you, this, this is version 22, I think. We've done a lot of changes. And sometimes, like during the last town plan process, uh, we updated the town plan for the Green Mountain Arena Hurtchuck property. So that town plan lived precisely two years, and we did a new town plan. That town, the last town, the previous town plan was 2013, and we did a new town plan in 2015. That's the last time we've done the town plan. So some, you can't, no one has a crystal ball. We can't predict the future. We may tackle something two years from now, another pandemic, God help us all, that requires town plan changes. We can update the town plan again. Right. Maybe open that curtain, Eric, behind you. Yep. Um, okay, I know the question, but it's gone. I'll come back. No problem. Yeah, I, I, that's the questions I've got, I've got a lot. That's why I brought it up. Is a lot of people feel like, or think that if it's in that town plan, we've got to do it. And 
And if it's not in the town plan, we can't do it. And that's just not the case. That's not the case. It's no. just, it's like guidance. Yeah, it's a living document. You can always be changed later. And I think looking at the uh, to-do list, so to speak, that punch list of the, uh, the implementation chapter for the 2015 plan, I think we did about 70% of it, maybe 80% of it, we actually accomplished. And there's certain things that we decided not to do because it made sense at the time when we wrote it. But by the time we got to do it, the world had changed. That happens. And sometimes it takes more than 10 years for something to happen too. Yeah, for example, there's a language in here about burying the power lines in downtown Morrisville. The funding to do that is going to take more than 10 years to amortize. So we'll talk about the funding now. You might be burying the power lines the next time the downtown's paved in 30 years from now, but it's going to start at some point, and that start is here. Right. So some well, of the we did one side of the street in Portland Street, but we haven't done the other side. <laughs> exactly. So some of the things in the plan are much longer than a 10-year time frame. It's a 30-year time frame horizon and longer sometimes. There was controversy last time about uh, the right-of-way between Elmore Street and Poppy Avenue. Has that been removed? No, that you guys did not make any changes to that, nor did the trustees at the last meeting. Okay. There is a, uh, the in regards to that, there's a desire to have a secondary access to the school, and that's the cheapest, easiest way to do it is between those two properties. It's flat, it's short, it's not a big hill like the other two access points, like a trip's corner, it's not a corner either. So that's still in there. I'm wondering if that can be revised. Is it too late to we can make any, that? You can make any revisions you want, but we'll require more hearings. So it's every time we have more hearings, we have to advertise again, so it's a more time and a bigger bill, and it's longer to do your downtown designation. So we can make more changes, but you start the process again every time we make changes. Right. For myself, I know I've gotten a lot of feedback about it, and I'd like to see that come out of the language, because I think there wasn't enough notification for whatever reason from from the town to the people that live in that area. I've talked to several people, and I think that language should be taken out. I mean, it doesn't have to be in there. You know, there's no reason for the town plan to have that in there. Because, like what you said, the property that the school actually owns, up by the trips, by actually the rent proper of Monty and Tracy's yep. place, they own that. The school owns that. It's not a right away. They own 25 feet. They would have to get another 25 feet if they wanted a two way. But right now, they could have it be a one-way in and not do anything. They don't have to acquire property or anything to have that second access. It could be now for a fire department if they wanted to open it up, you know, whatever. Absolutely. That's, that's my opinion. I just think there, there wasn't enough where there was notification or warning or advance notice. And Kathy, I know, Kelly, you guys feel that way. I felt that way, too. I, I didn't even know that that was in there, you know. I, and I'm chair of the board, and I look at this stuff all the time, but I never, I never caught that to the last meeting about that and I understand why why Kathy is feels the way she does about that property. And that's that's my opinion. I think that should come out. Yeah, if the majority of uh, wants to take it out, you take it out. The right. easy thing about taking it out is if you take something out, you don't have to you're not for creating another hearing. You're creating another hearing if you're changing language or adding things in. That's right. You can leave things on the cutting room floor as I like to say without requiring more hearings. And it also doesn't mean that if sometime in the future that could happen. It doesn't have to be in there. It doesn't have to be in there. Happen. The only real thing that you the reason you put things in the town plan, in many cases, you can chase grants for them once in the plan. When you chase a grant, you can say, look, our community really supports this. It's on page 67 of the town right. plan. Right. It's not there. It's not the end of the world. Right. I just know if, if I was Kathy and Scott, I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Can I speak? Go ahead, Kathy. So, um, yeah, I was totally shocked to see that um, because I had not heard anything about that. When I came to the last meeting and spoke with you and Todd about that, um, Todd said that the school wanted it. So that sent me on a wild goose chase. So I went to a school board meeting. They said that they didn't ask for it. So then Tommy Gardner did a whole thing in the paper and asked numerous people and nobody remembers anything. Right. So how can it be warned legally? How would I know that this was coming if nobody remembers it? How how is this legal? There's um, how is this legal to be able to put that in without letting any of the adjoining landowners or even the landowner knowing about it? I I just that is I'm not when, I'm, when I'm, I read that article, it looked horrible. I think. For us as town people, 
because nobody knew anything. Right. No, everybody's looking, well, I don't know. I don't remember who did it. No, I, I know it was mentioned sometime years ago. But well, I'm not doubting that it wasn't legally warned. I mean, these things are put in planning council meetings, and it may have very well. I missed it, and obviously you did. A lot of people did. Well, most of I read every zoning minute that there is, or meetings that you have. There's so many boards, I can't tell which. Um, that, but they only go back for the last year. And at the bottom, it just says, majority of the time, town plan. It doesn't say what they're working on that night for the town plan. Right. It just says what town detail? plan. Yeah, right. there's nothing. Right. And I only attended a couple of those meetings at the golf course, so I'm not, I'm, you know. Right, I'm but I mean, to put that out to the public, the, it just says town plan. Right. So there's no information for us for things that are important for me who might not be important for her. Right. You know what you pick and choose to spend your evenings after work going to and talking about. Um, so I, I would like to see the town work with the school to work on the property that they already own to put the road up there. Um, like you said, they don't have to buy the property, they already own the property. Um, that's what I would like to see from the board and the town is to work with the school to use the property further up Route 12. Yeah, if they want the access. That's right. that's my opinion. I, I, I don't oh, yeah, know. I, if that's I, was the board a, I was asking for that piece to be taken out of the yeah, if there's one more select board member yeah. wants me to do that, I'll just take that section out of the plan. It doesn't require any more hearings. It's really easy to do. Where's your thought, Jess? Um, do you know which one we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do. Um, that's, that's probably me to take it out of the plan, and we can really um, duly warn residents and actually have a study. Yeah, and it, I mean, like I said, it can happen at any point. It doesn't have to be in that plan. That's right. why I agree. So much of the stuff does not have to be in the plan. Right. Yeah. To have it get done. If, if it ever want, was going to get done. Well, hopefully it would be duly warned so the property owners would know about it. So yeah. this kind of throws me to another thing that's kind of off the town plan. Maybe it was in the town plan at one time, but the dog park. Right. My sister-in-law that lives in Bourne's apartments across the street got up warning about it, but I didn't. And we're the exact same from corner to dog park to my house, from corner from dog park to her house. Didn't affect her, but everybody that stops at the dog park now does a U-turn in my driveway to get out. <laughs> so I should have been warned right. about that too. Right. So there's we did of, talk about that at a lot of different meetings. There's I a lot of that. warning there for right. people that are that it's gonna that it's gonna involve. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more comments on this, or you? I, I think they're just going to get up the section out. I have a up. little bit of, can I talk about can, Kitty's Hall's designation? Can we, um, can we just establish, sorry to cut you off. No, um, that's okay. I just wanted to establish um, everyone introducing themselves and then if we're going to have a time limit on people's comments. We haven't decided that. Yeah, okay. Kind of waiting to see if it was going to be hard or easy. <laughs> Well, <laughs> looks like a pretty tame group here tonight. I'm it's hoping. A tame, it's a tame group. Jamie has a duck yet, though. I'm, I'm picking on you, Jamie. I think you're right, though. I think maybe, you know, limit each person speaking to two minutes, and you can speak on two different issues or two different Four times. Minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Speak faster than that. Come on. Four. Yeah, let's go three. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go three. Three. Three, three minutes. Of she's got a she's got a timer. Please introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Kelly Connolly. And I live down in Katie's Falls, and there's a designation in there. To, there's a s small little thing in there to change Katie's Falls from agricultural low density to medium density or high density. In high do, density. Could you do the page number? I don't think that's. I'm not familiar with the list. Yeah, it is in there. Um, do you have a page, Kelly? I don't have a page off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I've been really busy lately. Um, See if you can find it. I will. I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, there's, okay. There's, there's no, from my recollection, as a person who wrote most of it, there's no propose to change any zoning for Katie's Falls. There is a proposal to, uh, as we need more land for single family homes, connect the zoning, existing zoning in Katie's Falls to, like, uh, where Buckwheat lives on Sunset Drive, uh, through like Needle Eye Road, right there, to basically, if you look at the map above Gary. Katie's Falls is right there. It's LDR four, and you'll see LDR. What is that three in sunset? Gary, can you show us where that is? Katie's Falls, the top left, Gary. Yeah. 
<coughs> right. No, yep. Five right there. states is here. Yep. Katie's Falls is to your left. Katie's Falls is right there. Drop That's down, right there. New Hamels Road. Yep. Katie's Falls Road. Yeah. So the only talk about zoning for Katie's Falls it doesn't change the zoning neighborhood at all. It talks about as needed for single family homes. It's the white area between those two green areas to fill that in and to fill that in if we need more land for single family homes. But yeah, there's no can't. density changes. You, not yeah, for, yeah, not there for, was a density change. Not for it was changing Falls. from agricultural low density and changing it to medium density. I don't believe that, that was in here. I don't believe that's the case. Oh, yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting Find worked it. up. <laughs> While she's looking, I have some related comments. Uh, Brooke Scatcher and live on White Birch Road. Um, try to be brief. I printed it out as well if someone would like that. Yeah, I'll take a look. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, like masks and things. Hello. Um, so I think overall chapter two land use is in often in conflict with chapter five. Um, and I think the the practice of encouraging infill development throughout town is leading to uh, reduction of natural resources in the rural ag zone. Um, so specific things, page seven, uh, this is I think the most alarming piece sentence. Uh, the plan supports reducing the current 80,000 foot minimum lot size to no more than 40,000 square foot in less remote parts of the rural residential ag zone. Um, it's not defined any more clearly than that. And it's, uh, I don't believe that that's a commonly held uh, belief within town that we should be reducing the density the minimum lot size and increasing the density. I would suggest removing that because it's not referenced elsewhere and it's highly in conflict with all of the natural resource preservation elsewhere in the document. Um, page seven, um, instead of that, I would propose exploring increasing the minimum lot size to three to five acres, which reflects the Minimum lot size of neighboring towns. I said this at the last hearing. Stowe and Hyde Park also have a, their max, their larger minimum lot sizes are three to five acres, which preserves the rural feel that we enjoy in town. What was the second um, page you referenced? That I was uh, page seven. Page seven, third and paragraph. I'm yeah. proposing to add that sentence. Oh, it sounds like that's okay. not really possible, so I'll focus on things to remove uh -huh. unless we do another hearing. Uh -huh. Also on page seven and eight, it says um, major subdivisions shall continue to be done for, via the conservation subdivision process, and then further um, preserving to some degree the rural areas. I think it's it's not really a great planning document to preserve rural areas to some degree. I think that should be changed to as much as possible in the rural ag zone, maintain the rural character. Um, and then along those lines, page eight, the consensus elsewhere, I suggest removing the sentence. The consensus elsewhere is to encourage infill housing to satisfy demand for housing and population growth. Um, I think that this policy is already encouraging further subdivisions and development in presently undeveloped areas of town. And I think um, infill development is one of those things that just erodes the forest habitats. Do you have a big when you say infill, what does that mean? Putting houses between existing houses. Versus, oh. zoning, versus zoning new areas for development. So I could put one in my swamp. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, intent, the intent here is to say we don't want to zone more land for more housing development. So the intent is here is to add housing where we already have roads, already have water, sewer infrastructure to use those resources for the best of our ability. So the intent here is to not to to do infill versus zoning more land for more out in rural areas from to allow new housing development. So you are just referring to an infill area in Katie's Falls. I found the section right here too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. A couple last points, I'll be really quick. Um, page 16, where it discusses the end of the transportation section, there's no mention of bicycles and hardly any mention of pedestrian. 
and I would suggest adding at least a sentence that all road improvement projects, including those mentioned above, should be planned with measures to increase safety and accessibility for bicycle riders and pedestrians. If they're widening roads, and put in shoulders for bikes. Um, and then finally, page 30, the Conservation Commission should work with the Planning Council to develop additional conservation criteria that could be used to assess and minimize the impact of new developments. And I appreciate on page 31 the discussion of the Section 340 Environmental Resource Areas being um, pursued by the Conservation Commission. So. Okay, T Todd, do you want to respond to any of what he said? I think I gave the one response. Just one response. Versus new zoning. No, right. I think it's just a public hearing. I don't think we need to respond to everything. I mean, you don't. This is a public hearing, and yeah. the select board can decide to make any changes or not. Right. In many ways, though, we're putting the roof on the house at this meeting. The select yeah. board, I mean, we've done this for multiple years, so I'm not expecting to make many additional changes. If the select board wants me to, we can, but it's to start the process over again. So. Right. It's up to the board. It's too bad you weren't involved in well, the, the first 20 revisions we had, you know. Right. Um, I was at the last meeting and said much of this. It wasn't captured in the minutes, and I didn't type it. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that the other thing is like, no one was invited. There'd been no public invitation to be involved. Well, the, in the, the, the invitation is when you warn a meeting. Right. With invitations don't go out to people that are just might be interested. There's been no facilitated process, which many other towns do. But so, people, if you want to get involved in your government and know what's going on, you you check that website. Check that website all the time. They're always on there. Those agendas are there. I check them all the time. It's and, different than a facility. And, but people don't, they don't do it. It's like, I wasn't involved in this 14 years ago, and I started read, reading this stuff. I started getting involved, started going. to do that now, triggered by this process. Right. And I think that's a good thing. It is. But I, I really think that what you're hearing over and over again is that at this moment, people want at least one more round of right. editing. And so far, I don't think anyone has presented a reason, timeline, that that can't happen. That question did come up in the last round of meetings, and I think maybe that's something to address in this meeting. Is it possible to do another round of editing? It is. I can tell you from I can tell you from my experience, been in what two, three of them, is there's always going to be another another one that wants another change. Always going to be someone that wants another change. There is. So are you ever going to have a ten ten year plan that you can put down and and live by it? I'm just frustrated because I know all these these planners that come to these meetings all the time, and they put in so much time and effort and work into it. And including Todd, this is what Todd does, you know. And it's great that people want to get involved, but when you come at the very eleventh hour and you want to change big stuff in this plan, but it's a big deal. That's fine. I also think we should. Uh, I I hear what you're saying, Bob, and from, coming from someone who is new to the board and new to town government, um, mm -hmm. I I can say it's not a transparent um, process until you're part of the process. It and it takes like. a lot of work to understand how to navigate the system. Also, what I'm hearing, um, again, is that people are looking for a facilitated um, formal process um, to um, come up with this plan, and that is not the process that we're currently operating under. And I also think it is important to consider the fact that even if people may have been um, in theory or, um, you know, in theory, invited, or actually you know, invited to all of the planning council meetings. We were um, also under lockdown, and yeah. um, people weren't going to in-person meetings very much. So um, I'm not saying that totally negates what, what you're saying. I'm not trying to um, you know, raise. I, I'm just I'm, I'm raising another point here that um, I, I said what I needed to say. Okay. Hank. So I'm not complaining, but it, it is not transparent because, uh, like, now I signed up again, and I'll probably be told a few times about the meetings and agendas, but they disappear. And I think if you are signing up on the list to be getting the agendas and stuff, that they should always be there instead of all of a sudden they disappear. And this, I only heard about this because I heard about it from a friend of Morrisville from hearsay. And 
and it is hard. I you know work six days a week, have a child, and I can't go look at the newspaper all the time because I don't get it. I can't go look at the board all the time, and I'm busy. And so, if you you know maybe the town needs to be better at keeping the list of spreading the email agenda for the week or month, whatever it is. And um, you know because I, I I'm on it now. I'll probably be on it for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden it'll disappear again. So it is harder for people who do want to be part of the process to be part of it, I guess. And your website, you can go to your website, and I don't know how, well, at Kathy Chafee, I don't know what other towns do, but I can look into it, is there's only a, the last year of any minutes. If we want to be more transparent, I think you need to go back a little further with minutes. Well, you can call to get those if you want. Yeah, but, you we, to look but you want so that's really use that's inefficient with your for your staff to have somebody call and then mail it or email it or whatever to them it, if it, the internet's there it's not going away you've got plenty of space in your system to put at least the next last year so it would be 2021 mm -hmm. and you want to go forward do uh, you know go 1920 okay we're going into 22 take 19 out do 21 or 2021 um there especially in the zoning zoning only goes back to last year and i think right, that is very important that it needs yeah. to go back further than that if you want to be a transparent board that needs to happen more transparent yeah I um, just real briefly, I understand your situation. I've served on town committees and getting the word out, it feels like you're doing it all the time. This is a really big document though and there's some substantial changes. In the, the town plan drafting document supplied by the state, um, it mentions multiple times how community engagement is important. And there's this beautiful quote that says, when it comes to planning, if you're not doing it with people, they think you're doing it to them. And I think that's what the reaction exactly. you're getting. That's true. We've got three or four hands. I know Kristen's yeah, first. We have two people online that have had their hands up for some time. Okay. Now. Laura Streets has been on for a long time. Yeah. Well, let's do these three here, and then we'll do the ones online. Uh, Kristen. So, Kristen Conley, I'm represent, just representing myself as a citizen, um, not my work on the um, Conservation Commission, and also not in relation to the other Conley in the room. Um, so, I just wanted to say that on page 19 of the changes, this has actually been in there for quite a while, um, but I just recently had a look at it, and I think that the wording is misrepresentative of what it is trying to accomplish when looking at the implementation plan. Um, number two on the implementation <coughs> plan says that this plan su uh, supports studying what it would entail to update the village charter, expanding the village boundary line into developed sections of town. I think a couple of people have mentioned this as a concern. Um, without knowing maybe that it was worded in a couple of places, maybe they did. Um, but I think that removing on page 19 how it is worded, however the current status of the village paying property taxes to the town for non-revenue producing properties should come to an end either via the sale of subject properties or the possible expansion of village line so that most of these properties can be located inside the village limits and therefore become tax exempt. Um, I think that it's important to note that our village is roughly two and a half by two and a half miles. If we are using Bugby Springs, which is located two miles outside of the village limits, as a benchmark for where we're gonna push our village line, I think that that is not representative of what we're trying to have as a village. If you think about everything that it is within two miles in either direction, if we're trying to just reach that one property that's re that is owned by the the trustees or Morrisville Village, um, there's no other properties that they own outside of that. Every, line. every telephone pole we get taxed on outside okay. of the village. So every telephone pole, the hydro in Katie's Falls, there's lots of properties mm -hmm. in Stagecoach Katie's Falls area. Mm -hmm. I mean, the village line is largely arbitrary. It's a it's a right. it's a political line for when the village was corporate in 1890. But most people, even in this room, probably don't know where exactly the village line is. The main, the, Wally does. The main difference is when the village of Morrisville owns a property outside village limits in Morristown, it's taxable. 
So we as a community, I think in the town plan spend hundred send $125,000 a year roughly to the state for education taxes that we don't need to be sending. Right, but outside just, of just the because village of, line, how much other property is there? We're using Dunphy Springs as the, oh, there's, there's, the example here, there's, but that's two miles outside of the village line. There's dozens line. and dozens of them. There's lots of property. Every telephone pole, the village pays taxes to the state on telephone poles that are located in Morristown. So I guess, I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you. I know that you know just what our town owns yeah. and what our village owns because you work for both of them. Um, I just think that the phrasing of this, that we should push the village line so that property should be exempt from taxes, if we're using Bugby Springs as the example, that that doesn't that doesn't match. Because if you look at it, it's two miles outside of town and our village is only two and a half miles square. You know, like, or it's not. Special. I think ultimately you want to abolish the village line. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then you're Maybe not. Then Morris is not. <laughs> yeah. Then Morris is not paying taxes to Morris Town. So right. one hundred and twenty thousand dollars is just the education part. I mean, the the one of the largest taxpayers to the town is the village. It's mm -hmm. and it's not just one hand paying the other because most of your taxes go to the state and the state distributes them to other communities. So we're literally spending money on. You can give you all Morrisville and Morristown the same. It's not. We spend taxes on Morrisville properties in Morristown. Most of that money we're just sending out of town and have no say over it. Say, see you later. So that's the intent. The intent isn't. The intent isn't like to rezone the Bugby Springs area, make the village two miles bigger. The intent is to really a long term eliminate that line, and so we're not paying property taxes to ourselves, where most of them go to the state regardless. No, but everybody in that circle or in that score that you made would net then be paying village tax on top of town tax. I mean, the village tax is like eight dollars a year. Um, I think mine's twelve. I think mine's twelve dollars a year. Tiny. It, it, yeah. It's a very. I'm paying small more percentage. taxes. I live in a house in eighteen twenty. Well, the job. The, 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 I'll use my property example. For the, like the guy, I pay like twelve or fourteen dollars a year in village tax. I'm pretty sure the savings of taxes property we're not taxing each other on and sending to the state. We'll make up for that because I and the village is going to be spending less money to on its ratepayers because it's not paying tax to the town and largely sending most of the money to the state and raising the village tax for that. So it's not like a zero sum game. Your village tax would be less than fifteen bucks a year in your house, guaranteed less than twenty. Go ahead, Wally. Just, just a quick comment on Bugsby Springs. Sorry, the value of Bug uh, the Wally Reed. Thank you. The the value of Bugsby Springs to the village is its water. Okay, right. it's another source of very pure, drinkable water that can be tapped into in case something happens. Other than that, it has no value. The land uh, that was the village owned that was in the town of Hyde Park has been sold. Okay, to uh, high mowing seats. Mm -hmm. So we're no longer paying taxes on that to the village home, to the town of Hyde Park. If the town approached the village and wanted to purchase Bugsby, Bugsby Springs, and leave the water rights to the village, I think the village trustees and the village voters would be more than happy to do that. Right. And that would save probably thirty four hundred or forty three hundred dollars of the taxes annually paid to the town by the village for Bugby Springs, where two thirds or three quarters of that goes to the state for education money. Right. So that, maybe the trustees and select will strike a deal to sell the parcel, the village retains the water rights, and then we eliminate a tax bill. Which and just, just getting sent to for Mount people's Coast. information, Wally is a village trustee. Was. 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 Retired. Retired. <laughs> I, I no longer deal with that. Okay. <laughs> you have knowledge, so, though. Again, I do, I am saying that I think that this line should be stricken. Um, that is my suggestion. I'd like you to consider um, the part specifically that says that it supports expanding the village line. Um, Tied to that, Which I don't think that it should be on page 19 under the miscellaneous government properties. It's, it's, in, the your, it's in your change. It's in your, change. It's in your changes. It's very so the the possible expansion of the village line, so most of the properties can be located inside the village limits. Um, I think that it's enough to say the current status of the village, paying property taxes to the town for non-producing properties, should come to an end either via the sale of the subject property. Period. So get rid of either and also or the possible expansion of the village line. So most of these properties can be located within the village limits. 
Okay. That's my suggestion. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Good. We'll do Ron and then. Nelson. Yeah, we've got like six to do. Yeah. Thank Ron, you. you first. Ron Stankos. I'm coming here as a uh, town resident. As you know, I wear another hat as the chair of the Morristown Conservation Commission. Very quickly, uh, in my hat of the MCC, I have researched all the properties owned by the village of Morristown. I want to leave out water and light because. Uh, really just a department. Uh, maybe their personal property can be taxed. But anyway, uh, at the intersection of Dowling Road and Route um, was it 15A? Yeah. There's two parcels of land there that are taxed. Now I'm reading this uh, page six of ten, and that's basically what I came in for tonight. <laughs> was <clears throat> It'd be more advantageous if uh, some of those properties were due to the town. And they would be paying tax on it. What, what page? That's the water source on this one for this one those in Warsville currently. The, uh, the no, well out here. there at the intersection of 15A and 15. And the, uh, Page 6. Six of ten. Dowling Road. Well, I did a land there. Uh, there's also another parcel of land on Cadiz Falls, where there's the below uh, dam bordering the Cadiz uh, Falls Road. There's acres there that houses a building and the um, sluice for the uh, water to go to the, the generator. That land in particular can't be developed. It's wetland, bordered the Memorial River, near to the town. But anyway, what really concerns me is the proposal of extending the village limits. This it goes back to now, yeah, Chapter 7 implementation, the very first thing. Study a fuel town name. It's one town, Morristown. Then that way, when it was conceived, mm -hmm. and they want to live in the village, who thinks they are not in the town, they're misrepresented. <laughs> because if you look on your deed, it says, Town of Morristown, Town of Illinois, State of Vermont. And that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> I'm for doing away with the trustees and having a Water and light department under the town with a select board. That's what I'm for. Thanks, Ron. Jamie, you first, and then you, ma'am. We have people online. Yeah, I know. I'm going to go to them after. Uh, Jamie Brewster, Morristown. Uh, I'll be quick here. Um, page 12, climbing lanes. Uh, I appreciate Todd's work uh, after a discussion that he and I had uh, and the changes that he made. Uh, but uh, with some follow-up I did uh, with Agency of Transportation, uh, I'm going to request that uh, all references to that Shootsville Hill section um, and climbing lanes uh, be, be removed. Um, uh, from uh, the Public Outreach Manager at AOT, uh, she says, while there was mention of wildlife crossings in the initial request from the town of Stowe regarding speed limits in this area, it appears that the speed limit changes made in 2015 we're in, response to, we're in response to concerns regarding safety uh, in the current town plan talks that said they were wildlife. Um, uh, at the intersection of uh, 100 Moscow Road and that the town withdrew its request to extend the 40 mile an hour zone south to include Shoesville Hill for wildlife crossings. So according to the AOT, um, you know, the speed limit drop in that area was not to do uh, with wildlife, as we have written in our town plan. Uh, additionally, uh, they go on the possibility of a climbing lane or passing lane along Vermont Route 100, uh, Waterbury Still Line, Chipsville, however, is highly unlikely due to the wildlife sensitivity of the area. It's one of the top five wildlife crossing points in the entire state. Higher speeds of passing traffic and another lane would be the exact opposite of what would be wanted here. Um, so, it just seems that it's, it's just not worth putting it in there. Uh, it's not something that's going to happen. 
Uh, the state's going to fight us on it. Uh, it seems kind of petty, I think, on our part. Um, and in reality, uh, when you do the math, uh, when you drop that speed limit from what they did from 50 to 40 on that section from the lower village to the Moscow road, you're saving yourself or you're adding 30 seconds to your travel time. So we're looking at pissing and moaning over 30 seconds. That seems kind of petty to me. Um, additionally, uh, the, the concept, page 23, uh, sewer payments uh, being pushed out to the people of the town. Uh, again, absolutely not. Uh, I think that should be removed. Um, the sewer, that's on the village. That's on the people that live down here and, and the businesses. Uh, the town plan process. Uh, I know a lot of folks have, have talked about wanting to be included, uh, not feeling that it has been worn properly. Um, I looked up uh, Vermont statutes online, Title 24, Chapter 117, 4384, Preparation of Plan Hearings by Planning Commission. Now, Todd and I have talked about this, and we don't agree. Um, but uh, in Vermont states and online, uh, it says at the outset of the planning process, and throughout the process, planning commissions shall set up. Planning commissions shall solicit the participation of local citizens and organizations by holding informal working sessions that suit the needs of the local people. Now, I would argue that having people come to the planning council meetings to discuss this doesn't constitute an informal work session. Why do you say that? I would say that an informal work session would be something set along by itself. It would not be part of an official warned meeting that was set up for some other reason. And, uh, the, the planning council meetings, those are official meetings. They happen every two weeks, whatever it is. They're officials. I would say that an informal work session would be something that was, hey, we're going to get together. People will talk about having meetings with a moderator to discuss this stuff, to flesh this stuff out. I think that is more along the lines of the spirit of this law. Um, and I'm just laying it out there. Um, you know, and additionally, uh, with regards to, to the process, you know, I looked at the Stowtown plan from 2018, 2015, and they have a whole section in here that talks about public participation in the planning process. Says the, the, the commission held 20 public meetings throughout 2014, many of which were well attended and received a great deal of input from the Stowe community that was incorporated into this plan. And it lists all the different stuff that they did with the community. This is something that we could add into our plan. Because I think there are people who say, well, we weren't included. But if we know that they were, we could include it. Uh, can, can I respond to that? We're beyond yeah. the time. We're beyond we're, the time. We're way over time anyway. Okay, well, quick, quick two things. things. Uh, we, held, we held well more than 20 hearings on this. We've probably done 40. That's fine. Over but, the years, we started this in, to Jess's point, we started and, this before and, the pandemic, 2018, 2019. We've done this for years. Yeah, and you so, and I are in disagreement as to what's an informal working session and so on and so forth. And we don't need to, we don't need to deliberate this. Remember, meetings. this is a public hearing where I get to say, and okay. you don't need right. to But you were, you were told you had three minutes, about well, three minutes ago. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I feel like I wanted to respond to that because I went to a couple of those meetings this summer at Copley Country Club, and it was very informal. We were all sitting around several tables just chatting. Anybody that wanted to can come up there. It did not seem like this strict meeting that um, it was very difficult to deal with. It was awesome. My wife went with me, and she was like, hey, this is, this is not bad. This is fun. Can you know, so. Was it warned as a select board meeting? or a Planning uh, council meeting. meeting. All warned as planning council meeting. So we've done this for years. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I read that paper every week, like from front to cover, because a lot of the things that I do. Which paper? News, the News and Citizen. Oh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't cover any planning in it. What's that? They don't cover planning in a general. No, but I always am looking for those meetings because the. They're not in there. They're not, they're they're not in there. there. Well, where are they? What, ask they, Tommy Gardner. Get him to put them in there. They're put there every day. They're here in the town offices, they're at the <laughs> library. They're right. at the post office. They're not in the paper. Oh. Dude, the I work all day long. Yeah, I, I work 12 right. hours, 10 hours are a they day. In, Bob they, comments directly to the porch here, not back yeah. and forth, please. Yeah, that's right. Are they on we the get, web page? 
we get, yeah, we're going to have, have more order here, things. not just blurt out comments here and there. And we're supposed no. to try to stick to the changes. That was the intent yes. of the meeting. Right. Oh. We're, the re we're redoing the same meeting as last time. Right. Ma'am, it's your, it's your turn. Can you tell us who you are? And My name is Talib Nelson. I live in Morristown, uh, south of the town. I've been here for more than 40 years. I, I, I found out about the document, thank you, that just put something on Front Porch Forum, and then I was able to download it and really see whoever, you guys, this is an amazing document. It's not done for sure, but there's been a lot of work that has gone into it, and each chapter is very informative. But to, to get that yesterday and to try to come to prepare it, I'm not prepared the way so many people are prepared tonight. But I do appreciate the work that's been done. But I'm not here as an adversarial person. I'm here, and it's not like you, you and us and us and they. Somewhere we have to join together to figure out how we can make this work. This man that talks about informal meetings, you have an agenda, you decide that you're going to be on working committee, you are going to attend the meeting, you have tasks you're going to do. That would be very helpful. A lot of us work like crazy. We don't check the things we should be checking. So, I mean, I, I found out that on Front Porch Forum. Okay. But at least I, I found out about it, and I feel remiss that I haven't been part of it because development to me in this community, I look around and I go, oh my God, what are we doing? Okay, we need housing. So I can't dispute that we need housing. We need housing. And you're doing the best you can. But my thing about the young man in the front who talks about considering environment, the, world, the nature of the rural environment, and how do we factor that in also with what we're doing here, to me is very important. I don't want to lose the, the vision of Vermont and ruralness by seeing a megamopolis here. I want, but, I, but I want to be able to say, yeah, we need housing. And is there a way that we can continue to have housing but yeah, I consider all the other variables that people have brought up tonight, because I think there's a lot of important things that have been brought up. And I think there's been a lot of enormous work that you've all been done, so I'm not negating that. But I would like to see a way that we could all, as a community, be engaged in a way, maybe we're being remiss if we're not seeing things, but we need to, we want to be involved. So how can we be involved? And you don't feel like we're just coming in here attacking what you're doing, because that's not where I'm coming from. But, I'm, but I do have an idea, but I don't want to see. But the only way that's going to happen is if we talk together and we, 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 we find out the details of what's going on here. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for having the meeting. Thank you. And we're going to go to the folks virtually. I know Laura Street's been waiting a long time, and so is Ed. Laura, you go first. Okay. Can you hear me, Laura? You got your hand up. <coughs> Maybe she got frustrated. Laura, you might be muted. Ed, can you hear us? You're muted too, Ed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, are we good? I had some notes uh, of some broad issues here, but I think I'm going to skip them in the interests of time. Uh, just touch on it. Three minutes. Three minutes. That's good to know. I can watch on the clock there. Um, so the first thing I want to say is in terms of warning, um, I, I think if you really, really want uh, citizen involvement right from the get go, which would have <laughs> saved you after so many drafts, having to go through this as if you were doing it from scratch, I can appreciate the frustration you must feel. I, I wouldn't have the stomach for that. I admire you for doing it. Um, you really have to announce these things with what's called push marketing. You can't put something in a location like post this at headquarters and then expect people to go to it. Some will, but almost nobody will. I look for these issues. I'm, I'm active. I want to be interested in this. And it was a total surprise to me when it was explained to me that these hearings have been going on for a couple of years or more. You know, where was I? I never saw this. So uh, the, 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 the standard um, of publicity today in this area seems to be front page form. So I would have to say if you really want citizen involvement and you haven't posted it frequently, it's not a lot of work to do that on front page form. You can't say you have solicited um, uh, involvement. The other thing is I think some tutorial by the people 
engaged in writing this. And I'm thinking mostly of Tom, of Todd rather, who has an actual master's degree in how to do this stuff um, uh, that, that, that teaches the citizens who want to be involved what the scope of this is. What I'm saying in these hearings and on comments is this endless parade of, of, of individual issues. I don't want to demean them by saying pet issues because every one of them is an important thing that the town should have been paying attention to quite some time ago, but they're not all issues of discussion for a town plan necessarily. They should, they should be broader issues that define situations or things we're doing we shouldn't be doing and vice versa that incorporate these issues, things like um, um, issues of transparency, for example, that have come up in the last year in some in some things, some some areas, um, and there are some things that made it onto the town plan. I don't know if they're still here. That you know, I'd need to see the research that you did um, to want to put it into the town plan. Things that might ultimately once publicized. Be, be objects of ridicule. And I, I'm thinking mostly of the attempt to get other towns in the state highway uh, department to let us dictate how they're going to um, move traffic through their towns. The very concept that we'd be a bedroom community, for example, for people who want to work. There are so, in the midst of redefining the concept of work, uh, those may be dead issues within a year or two you know, why you'd put that in the town plan rather than focusing on things we should be influencing. So I have Thanks, a little- you, you hit your three minutes, Ed. Okay, great. I'll submit the rest of this in writing to you all. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank Laura, you. can you hear us now? Laura. She's muted or she can't hear us. She's frozen. She's frozen. She's frozen now. We'll come back to you, Laura. Somebody else have a comment? It, can I have my Go ahead. back? One, one more, you got one more. <laughs> one oh, more? this is the same one. This is but the no same more, no more one. Outbursts. It was on page eight. Page eight, so it says right, um, I just had it in my hand. It's a, it's a, the first paragraph. It's the third uh, bolded word, wording. Mm. I think that's what you're referring to. Let's go to nine. Well, that's six we're looking at. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's the difference. <laughs> that's the difference. The council should only focus on converting land zoned rural residential agricultural zone to low or medium density residential in areas where municipal services already exist or can be extended to, such as Katie Falls, Morristown Corners, Pinewood Estates, and along such, and extended, yeah, and along Needles Eye Road. So my concern about that is that anybody that drives through there, you take your life in your hand anytime you try to cross that road. I literally have had people drive up on Barb Dara's hill to get around us when we were trying to cross the road. That road can't take any more traffic. It can't. They come down through there Mach 4. I'm not kidding you. At least it's 25 mile an hour zone. It is a 25 mile an hour zone. I had people give me the finger and no. scream at me when I tell them when I'm trying to cross the road and they won't stop. And that can't, you know, Katie's Falls just can't take it. It's a tough road. It, it can't take any more traffic. It, literally, there's no signs. We've asked for signs that say residential zone. Uh, Dan Lindley said, ah, they don't pay attention to it anyway. When they were repaving that road, we asked them to do a little bit of change into it, you know? Because it's not safe. The water comes down that road and it freezes over and it's like a 
my grandmother had a garage out there. I don't know if you remember that. There's a little garage right there. That thing must have been here, what, three, four times? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they'd come yeah. off the needle I road and they'd slam right into it because nobody stops there. We very seldom have uh, police on that road. And when they do, they're up at her tracks. I mean, what good does that do down there on that hill? I'm sure Jason would park right in your driveway if you asked him. I wish he would. I wish he would. You I would park my driveway on Copley Avenue too. You get a lot of money there. I would allow. I would let you park in my driveway because you could tuck back enough so they wouldn't see you when you're coming up that hill. Sometimes those speed trailers are maybe um, the the radar. Yeah, they put signs. them out there by her tracks. <coughs> right. What no, does that do? Put it more toward pits after your place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what goods it do way up there? They're coming down that hill and then they hit the gas and right. come up the hill. Well, thank you. I just would like to see that just stay, like, until we can figure out the road issue. I don't need, we don't need any more people in that village. I literally. And I don't know what you can do about that, but let's fix the road first. Okay, the intent, again, is not to actually change anything in where you live. It's where Gary pointed. It shows on page 10 of the plan. Oh, I know, but they're using the Needle Eye Road. Are you going to take out the bridge? You're gonna take out the like the one left trestle bridge in the state? No, you can't. It's a structure. <laughs> on page ten, it shows connecting those areas when we need single family home land for single family homes. Connecting LDR four to LDR three or LDR five to LDR one. The intent the intention isn't to change it. This no, this plan in no way talks about changing your zoning where you look, Kelly. Zero way. It talks about adding in areas around that is if we need land for single family homes. But that you're missing the point. It's gonna it's gonna add to the burden on the roads. It's gonna add additional traffic on the roads. I don't, the, the really whole zoning thing, there's nobody in Katie's Falls that's gonna like subdivide their plots. I, I mean, I'm not even worried about that. What I'm worried about is the added traffic on the roads. Until that road can be fixed somehow or another, and I don't even know how you would do that. Either the road people, not me. Yeah, until that could get done, you can't add any more traffic there. We were hoping that the bypass would alleviate some of the traffic that uses oh Katie's Falls Road. And it probably does, but that doesn't mean there's still not a lot of traffic. Yeah, right? but yeah. it got wild this summer with the construction. Yeah. I mean, it literally, there was people giving us fingers. Barb Dare almost got hit. She literally had to run across the road. She's 80 years old. At least the heavy trucks aren't supposed to use the bridge now, so aren't supposed to. They're not supposed to, but they do. Yeah. Yeah. Hank, you had a comment. Yeah, Hank, uh, I own Chuck's Bikes, and um, I have three kids visiting from abroad, coming back from college to visit family, and three of them are like, what is going on in, with the development in this town? So I'm not trying to change the town plan. I'm just saying that you guys really need, and ladies, need to think about long-term ramifications of it. For one, the big development Grand Maple wants to do, I am totally opposed to that. I'm sure there's a lot of other people because that's going to change the whole school structure too. So it's not just <coughs> development. You've done a great job with the town, but I think there needs to be some railing in of leashes because that's not a small project, 140. 136. Or 130, okay, 136, yeah. not overinflated. That's so you really much. have to think long-term because you don't want to be like every exit along the highway. We don't, yeah. Thanks, I have the second one. He said that's what I'm talking about too partially. Thank you. Wally. Uh, Bob, thank you. If I may just give a little history on some town plans and some effects. I was on the Board of Village Trustees when we voted to remove ourselves from the Memorial County Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. And Todd and Trish had personality issues and planning conflicts with people there. They supported our voting to remove ourselves from there. The other issue is one member of the village trustees had real concerns with the Loyal County Planning Commission trying to tell us what we had to do. So the history was we, we rejected other people telling us what we had to do and us telling AOT and Stowe and Johnson and other villages, towns, what they had to do with their traffic I think it's kind of, we went, you know, we voted to remove ourselves from the Memorial mm -hmm. County Planning Commission. Now we're in a hurry to get back into that organization. 
We're already in it. Well, we well, yes, but I mean the town plan and yeah. the t downtown designation and all that. So as I say, you kind of you know six seven years ago we were saying this. Now we're saying something different. Well, I think I think you're right. That's I mean, the I was history. That's I was there also, you know, when we did it. But I think we've we've all come to realize that we do need to work together if we can. And yeah. and I, I agree. We've got we've got some great talent with Trisha and with Todd. We can do a, a lot of that stuff ourselves. We don't need the LCPC, yeah. but there are things the LCPC does help a lot with. Yeah. A lot there's a lot of grants that come from oh, yeah. them. A lot of a lot of state stuff. A lot of the downtown designation stuff that we do need. Yeah. And so we decided. We you know we we want to try to work with them, but. I understand what you're saying. LCPC is an arm of the state. No matter how they're described, they're an arm of the state. And and more state control isn't necessarily good for the towns. Yeah, it, it, so, I, I, that was just the history. Because some of the people right. in this room know and weren't right. here, weren't involved. That's fair. You and I were. And That's so, fair. Yeah. But we are we have really come full circle, I believe, with the L C P C and are are use, using them. Um, they have some planners that have been great help. To us, and um, you know, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to foster that and get away from the, you know, the past history where we didn't get along. Right. So I, I totally agree yeah. with that. I was just pointing out that yeah. one of our reasons for, for leaving there was because they were trying to tell us what to do. Maybe we should not try so hard to suggest to them what they needed. Right. Right. And and we also have Judy who sits on that board too, and that that's helpful. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Thank Wally. You, thanks for your time. Yeah. Tom, Tom, you're, I know you were waiting for a while. Go ahead. Tom, I just want to know, is there a way that you approve this plan tonight that we could have a meeting later with inclusive, that we not just put it on the town sites that we're going to have a meeting to discuss this, this plan, but really get the word out and have an inclusive where everybody has input for this plan and have that meeting in possibility of revising this plan. Is that possible to move forward to I think so. I, I mean, I appreciate everybody that comes here and has, you know, something to, for input. You know, I understand it. I appreciate it. We are, we are at the 21st, 22nd version, but can we change it? Yeah, we can change it. If, if there's enough reason to do it, our board can say, look, we don't want that, or we want to make a change. It's not just cutting some now. So we can kick the can a, a little bit and make those revisions, and you know if it makes a better plan, we can do it. And Tom, we can't improve anything tonight, just so you're aware. Yeah. Oh, okay. Any votes have to be after the have to be uh, after the hearing's closed. So even if they decided to close the hearing tonight and we're okay with the plan as is, uh, they can't vote on this plan until their next meeting later this month. Yeah, I wanted to have you explain exactly the process and when it will be dubbed the new town plan. Depends how many times you're changing it. Right. Yeah, I can't answer. If we don't make any changes. If we don't make any changes. Well, other remember, than taking something out. Yes. Other than if we don't make any changes other than taking something out, the board can close the hearing tonight and can vote on the plan at the next regular meeting. So today is the Not third. Tonight. And then the board can vote on the plan on the 17th. Remember, there's two bodies that need to approve this plan. The trustees, the trustees also have to. The trustees need to approve this plan as well. The trustees have to uh, agree to changes in the plan on Wednesday night's hearing. And then we'll have to need some, one more meeting after that at a minimum. But every time we make a change, we have to go back to the planning council where, I mean, there's a lot of people at this meeting, but there have been many more people than this at the planning meetings where the town plan was actually written over the last three years. This is a small subset of the overall public involvement. That board writes the plan, and the select board is the one who has to approve it and the trustees ultimately. So really, this board should be directing the planning council to make changes. The changes really need to come from the planning council. That's the actual planning body. This is just the approval body. So we start the process again, we make changes. The planning council make the changes, has to update the reporting for them, which update again for tonight, and maybe update again. We'll see what the board wants to do and what the trustees want to do as well. Yeah, so it's really like you guys, and it's great to come, but it's coming to the select board. We're the people that rubber stamp it at the end. Yeah, it's a wrong, the, it's a wrong board for change. It's the wrong board to really go with your concerns. The right board is the planning council, um, but we understand why you're here, and you know you want to have a place you can speak. Go ahead, Kristen. Um, just speaking to that as part a participant in the process who sat at many of the meetings at the planning council and is trying, you know, really tries to 
go to the next meeting too? Why can't the trustees and the select board meet together so that people who have concerns don't have to show up to two meetings after showing up to 20 meetings over the course of years? You know, it's right. We it's do exhausting. have that. We do have that, just not. That was the golf course. We did not. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. I mean, but then after the golf course meeting, which I was in attendance for, I had to attend the last two meetings right. and this meeting and next meeting in order to be heard. A lot of meetings. I go to all of them. I understand because I see you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, like, the like, I have a child and a job and a life, you know, like, and I want to be a participant and I look for the agendas and I understand the frustration because it's hard to keep up, you know, it's hard. It's hard to be involved and to know what's going on in town. But you can do it, but it takes a lot of time. And I'm not a paid employee, you're a paid. Yep. So, like, for me to be here, you know, like, it's like a little different. <laughs> Um, so it would be appreciated if you could make that step to make it a little bit easier. I, I think, I think one, one of the issues is also space. Yeah. Because when we did, we did it up at the, the, the country club, but it was, you know, with COVID and everything, it's difficult here. We're getting, we're running out of space right now to have, if we had a trustees meeting and a, and a select board meeting at the same time. So those are also other issues that come into it. I, I agree with you about the transparency. I, um, I have talked with Tommy Gardner about how can we get more information out to the community. And it's really difficult. It's a, it's a difficult, I don't have any answers, but I know that it is a problem. Yeah, I, and I'm less concerned about the transparency because I understand how to do it. Like other people not understanding, I think they're understanding now that there is a way to be able to find them because I showed up at the meetings I around them. So like, I know they're there. It's easier if people have reached out beforehand and held a big, maybe at the golf club, instead of having a steak dinner, it could have been a town meeting style event where more people were there besides just people who sat on boards in town and you guys and the trustees. Does yeah. the library still have a meeting room? Is that no. it would, no. it's, it's a school? It's a school. <laughs> yeah. You know? We we've met before at the um, BFW before. Right. American right. Legion. I mean. I, I understand. Connection. I was. I'm. I'm offering how that could be right. possible. Right. And we have had many joint it meetings, not just for that steak dinner. We've had many joint meetings in the past that I remember. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't happen every time, but it would be helpful if we could. Hank, you first, and then you, Ron. I see. Yeah, so, um, so can a business owner, non-resident, be on a select the play board? Yes. Yeah. There's no openings. I've been looking. Depends on the board, but you can't. Looking. You can't be on a select board, but you can be on some of the other boards. Planning and ERB. The board's statutory required majority of the members to be uh, to be town residents or village residents. So, for example, on the uh, DRB, uh, Paul Trudell, who's been on the DRB for Three generations now uh, as a Hyde Park resident. And on the Planning Council, Alan Van Anna from Lost Nation and Josh Goldstein are both Elmore and Wolcott residents. So you don't have to be a town resident. Just majority have to be town residents. Okay. Laura, can you hear me? Just Laura, she typed a note. Right, I got it right here. You didn't get that. Okay. I've got Laura's note. I guess she's still frozen. Frozen up there. Laura Street said, please remove last paragraph on page 23. No taxing town for village septic. That's also yeah. Okay. Oh. yeah. That was her comment. And I Go ahead. am a business owner and I have total many calls with the water and light about overcharges. Um, they will not give me two meters even if I offer to pay for two meters because I use about 100 gallons in the downstairs and the upstairs uses the apartment. So they came up with a magic number to charge me and it's way too much. Um, and then they won't do any, um, like say you fill up your pool. I've heard of many people filling up their pools and get charged for sewer because they filled their pool. So they took 5,000 gallons and they get charged for 5,000 gallons of sewer when it's in their pool the whole time. So there's, if you guys are part kind of together, not. you're not. That, no. So I just We're not in charge of utility. About that from you, about you having a department in the town. Did, did you say that? The water and light 
Okay, so okay, so it's or nothing. So disregard what I said. Right. Okay. Go ahead, Wally. Uh, this comment I put my log on the board when we did, started doing meters. We discovered that we had five thousand pools in the village of Morrisville. Everybody said they filled their pool. Well, there's not five thousand pools in the village of Morrisville because not everyone is totally up front with what they do. And I'm not saying yeah, oh, yeah. any different. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying as a board, we look. You use it. These are the costs. Right. Okay. I just have one comment, <laughs> and that is, I'm sort of disappointed that there is at least one individual here on the planning council to listen to the comment. Or, or a trustee. Or a trustee. And or a trustee. I agree with you. Who, who were on the planning council? Could you just tell us who was on the planning council? You, well, I don't have the list in front of me. Do you know? Can you list them? Uh, Etienne is the chairman. Etienne, right? Etienne Hancock's the chair. Uh, the vice chair is Tom Sniff, who's also a village trustee. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's Josh Goldstein, Alan Van Anda, and Steve Foster. Steve Foster. Yeah. And they're all more school residents? No, Alan and no. Josh are not. I just don't understand how somebody from another town can decide what more so it's going to look like. And people, well, it depends. I mean, they are business. I mean, they're business, business owners here. here. He sense. You know, I know a lot of business owners that do a ton of business in Morrisville, mm -hmm. but they don't live in Morrisville, and they're upset that they can't even complain about the taxes. Yeah. That's the state statute. They don't have a voice. That's what the state statute says. But this board and the trustee is the appointing body. So if people don't like the select board appointing non town residents to the DRD or planning, right. let them know and it's up to them to do the appointments. It is. So just, um, I think that you could use your town of Morrisville Facebook page to get a lot of information out. <coughs> we do have, have one. full control of that, but I went through it the other night and there's not a thing about a meeting. Well, I don't know if we keep it that up. We don't, yeah, you know, we have to be careful about social media because we get in trouble on social media. And then I want, Try not to do it. I want you guys to really consider as you build up in this town. Um, right now, it's taking you eight months to get an eye appointment in town. Mm -hmm. I can't. If you're not I a new mean, patient, you're three months gonna, to get a doctor's appointment. If you're going to build put this much, if you're going to keep continue building, you need to find the, um, you know, the infrastructure to right. support it. Really do. I mean, and then the dentist office is is six months, mm -hmm. and 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 then I make three appointments at a time. Right. So I know that they're there, but I'm making them a year at a time. But we don't have enough infrastructure to fill what we're bringing in for people. Thanks for the input. Do we have any other? Oh, Laura, can you hear us now? Yes, I'm sorry. I was hey. having technical difficulties. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, um, this is my fourth time requesting this. On page 23, the last paragraph um, yeah. that refers to, that begins, um, it's important to note that this plan also views the existence of sewer septic as a common good. Um, I just, I, as a town person, I wanna say that every town person I've spoken to have said that if this village wants to incur all of our costs that we do for our own personal septic, then we can all get along. However, um, a new building went on right behind me. Their new mound system cost them over $30,000. Um, I live in a development, there's five of us uh, who share a leach field. Um, to replace our pump is going to cost $10,000. Uh, we pay, um, over $120 each um, year for power to power the pump. Uh, we have to have them, um, our annual costs run about $500 between maintenance and um, pumping. So um, I absolutely believe that we should not, that the town people should not incur any costs for the village septic because we are not on your septic. Um, it needs uh, the, Current uh, board members, as far as my research shows that um, there is only one town person on the select board. And there's only one town person on the board of trustees. I could be wrong about that, um, but it seems like 
the people that are voting on this are all from the village. So of course, village people want the town to help pay for your septic. Um, it, that's not that's not reasonable. And it seems like because we don't have an equitable voice in the um, in either of the boards, it seems like it's taxation without representation. Um, and I also feel that anyone who uh, on both the trustees and the select board, if they've uh, sold property to any of the developers or currently have a um, right of first refusal should not be allowed to vote on this at all. I mean, that's an absolute conflict of interest. Um, the, um, and I would say that, you know, when I go to the trustees meeting, which I will go to, you know, I have to wait for the, the village to actually allow me to even speak about this. And, you're trying to tax me and yet you have, the village has the right to decide whether I can speak about it. That's, it needs to be removed. Um, the, um, if, if um, the village cannot uh, financially manage their septic system, and I should mention that there was a clause that uh, the town should have the option, uh, right or first refusal to buy uh, the, the uh, Morrisville Power and Light, and they took that out. So the town does not have the right to buy this power company. And if they can't manage it without having to tax people that aren't using it, then they need to sell to a larger uh, business. Um, and the, you cannot view the town folks as unlimited income. We're already paying close to 11% taxes, highest taxed in the state. Um, so this is not acceptable and needs to be removed and any discussion about it should end now. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Hey, Bob, can I respond to that? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Laura, this is Gary. I, uh, I can't seem to find that on page 23, but we did find it on page 19 of... Uh, I don't know what it's on um, I the town plan that's that's the revised version that was that is posted on your website that you guys have directed us to is on page 23 and it's at the very bottom and it rolls over to the next page I've checked it three times well I don't know if you have another version and if the version on the website is not updated I'm happy to read it to you I see it I don't have the do you have another? The draft plan of November 17th has it on page 19. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's the same thing, but it's on a different page, depending <laughs> on the draft. Yeah, what I was getting at is I had a note here that we were supposed to remove that. We removed, that we removed parts about the um, town taking over the water and sewer departments. Yeah. This part was left as is. All, I mean, the village trustees can't tax town people. They have no statutory authority to do to authority to do so. The only people that can tax the town are the select board to put together the budget and the town meeting that approves it. So the language is in there to give the select board flexibility. If the select board wanted to help out and put some money towards pretreatment to help businesses in town, because the sewer plant exists both within the village and extends into the town, this helps because the select board the authority to do so. But the only people that can tax you. The village trustees can't tax anyone in the town. The select board can put a budget forward that town meeting approves. That's the only way to tax you on something like that. So it's just, that language is there to give the select board flexibility. Well, <laughs> I mean, I would just like to say, it says right here, this plan supports any effort to spread some of the cost of the sewer plant upgrades and operations to these additional non-user beneficiaries. The current practice has mainly uh, village residents subsidizing the full cost of this uh, sewer system for non-user town beneficiaries. I mean, that's ridiculous. But I also would like, as because this is my fourth time, um, it would be really nice to sit, have uh, a published vote on who who's for this and who isn't, because I think the, the voters have a right to know who's in, who wants to tax the town folks for the village septic. I think what Todd's saying is the town, the the residents, the voters would have an opportunity to weigh in. On well, I, I mean, I think it should be taken out. I, I mean, if you want to say if 
And if that's your opinion, then you should vote and say, yes, we want the opportunity to tax the town payers for the septic. Put it clear and make it clear that you are want you want that. Put it out there. <laughs> if Thanks you think that. that's something in there, then let all the voters know you think that's a viable option. Kelly, get one more. One more. This is my second. So why aren't we looking to the people that are putting the pressure on the septic system? All of the apartment buildings that are coming in, all these people that, I mean, it worked fine. Before. The businesses, the, the breweries, I'm the not businesses, talking about, like, restaurants. I'm not talking about, no, I'm not even talking no. about that. It worked fine before. That's the biggest use. The biggest use is a 137 unit apartment building. Well, no. And, and if you have two people in that. No, that's not correct. That's, they, huh? they want, the village wants that flow. So the, what Bob is saying is correct. The sewer plant only has minor VOD issues at this point. It really doesn't. The flow is actually equal, uh, equalized at this point. Mm -hmm. The high strength users, the breweries, the food businesses, were the ones stressing the function of the sewer plant. The sewer plant's operating at half capacity. The residential, the, the new residential growth you're seeing, and granted, we only added 334 people last census. It's not a ton of people. But the new residential units you're seeing, they want that flow to offset the heavier industrial and commercial yeah. flow. The, the old adage is the best solution for pollution is dilution. The residential uses are diluting the high strength commercial flow. Yeah. Residential so is a very small part. They, of they need more flow to make the so they need more flow. They want that residential use. And the trustees can explain that better on Wednesday night than I can. Yeah. But I've been around long enough. I to, wouldn't believe it. They right. said anyway. So just Wally, 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 one was, it's called VOD, bio oxygen something, and I want to say, but because of some specific users using large quantities of food products that were coming into the system, the plant was not designed for that volume, okay? And that created an out of balance. They have gone to, to these people, that has been corrected. Yes. Through pre-treatment by the person, the company that created the problem. Oh, okay. In efficiency okay. practices. Side, side okay. So they've improved the practices. The plant, when I was there, was operating below 50% capacity. Okay. It was an eight-year plant. There's five years left on the bond, I believe, but I could stay. I think right. that's about right. Anyway, so the increased uses in the residential demand is not going to overstress the plant for further growth on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. And anytime you connect a new user to the facility, the state requires them to pay a fee for that. And it's measured on usage and yeah. there's formulas out there. But it goes but, to the state, correct? No, it goes to a fund that is named a fund that's maintained by the village for further expansion. For a new sewer right. plant. There's there, the there's yeah, there currently aren't any sewer issues. They want the residential flow to offset the higher strength commercial flow. But I'm, I'm a village resident. And the town people do not need to pay for my septic. Because believe me, I lived in a rural setting for some time called the Griggs Farm. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's expensive. So, you know, we don't need, as a village resident, I don't need that statement, but that's up to these people to decide. Yeah. Thanks, Wally. Good explanation. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more comments or input? Does the board want to go back and deliver in session like last time? We could do that. I'm not sure that we can do deliberative session. No? I'm not clear on the statute as to whether deliberative session, you're not sitting as a quasi-judicial board here. This is an approval process, not um, a deliberative process. I, 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 it's not clear to me whether or not they can actually go into deliberative session. I believe they can, but you're the town. We did it last time. <laughs> yeah. but I, I know we did it last time. I'm just not sure that we are, we are actually- Right, have we need to find that out. But I mean, we're not going to make any any um, action tonight. tonight anyway. We can't vote on the plan tonight. Anyway. No, we're not voting on anything. So go ahead, is, Sharon. I have just one comment. So would you please home, introduce yourself? I'm Sharon Rowell, and um, I live in live in the town. But um, what I wanted you to say is, I I'm hearing so much talent in this room that for whatever reason, 
haven't had a say <laughs> in where they thought they should have had. And I would like very much to have this gentleman here. I did. You know, people, uh, people I've not met before. Uh, many people have so many good comments and thoughts. I just think you know to have another round of some sort. I don't know if it's with the planning council or with everyone involved, but I, I don't want you making this decision from, I, I just think you need another round of some sort. Thanks, Sharon. That's all I have to say. So the hard, the hard part is, is hearing, is talk keeps saying, well, it, it, it doesn't have to happen. Or, you know, he, or, you know, it, just because it's here doesn't mean it's in stone. But when you put something like that out to the townspeople, we think it is. Right. And, it, and whatever he says isn't right. really going to change that because it's a plan. Mm -hmm. And usually every plan that you try to make mm -hmm. in your personal and professional life, you yeah. try to follow yeah. that plan. Sometimes you do curve left or right. But it is, you know, it's like a budget. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the hard thing there that is, it is for me as a taxpayer to listen. I know. Why don't we set up a listening session with a facilitator? <laughs> and I would like to see a reduction in salt usage because it is out of control. It is out of control. It is beyond out of control. I'm sorry to. Right. But well, that's, it is, I've seen more salt and snow issue. fall down. They were all plowing yesterday. That's, that's, that's an issue for another, for another for another board. Yeah. Trisha would like to speak. What's that? Trisha would like to speak. Is that okay? Okay. Go ahead. Trisha. Uh, hi everyone. Thank you. Uh, I've listened through this whole conversation tonight, and uh, I'd love to hear the comments. I'd love to hear people talk about what is important to our community, what is not important to our community. And I think everyone is in agreement that we, we want to get on the same page. We, this, is, this is really important that we are uh, moving forward together as a community. And especially my job as community development, I follow this very closely. I have worked very closely with Todd in my own agendas of like wanting public art included in zoning packages and things that I see that are really should be part of our community. But I want everyone to really understand like this, this is not a, a, a document that is set in stone. And that when when this town plan is approved, we, we approve this, our select board approves this town plan, the village of Traps will approve it. As this goes through, we start a next town plan for what we want to move forward. So I would suggest everyone that's had comments tonight about this town plan, get on the page of, as we move forward. You know what I mean? This, this is really, really important that Everyone's voice is heard, but we're at the, the we're at the end of the timeline here, and not that this couldn't be extended, but I do think that you everyone needs to understand like this isn't like a end of the road where the stop sign is there. That we will we will start a new town plan once this is all approved and we're we're through the state. And you know, Todd is Todd is very welcome. I mean, to anyone who wants to come in and talk about this, this is not. I I felt like sometimes people were sort of targeting Todd tonight. This is a planning council. We have a planning council. We have a development review board. It is a not a town that does not have these different facets. And I just want to give them a lot of credit for what they've done. And I think you're, you're asking us to go back to a drawing board. Well, let's all look at this moving forward, not backwards. Like, let's get this town plan through and then let's start thinking about our next one and what you all want to see. So that's Thank my comment. That. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? What's the difference between the review board 
and planning commission. Two different <coughs> boards. So well, I get that. The planning I'm council, for example, writes the town plan, writes the zoning bylaws. The development review board interprets the zoning bylaws, and they handle large development. So when when the 136 unit development comes in, it does it goes to the development review board, and they vote on that the project is approved or not. I'm just a messenger between all the boards. I'm not on, I don't, I'm not on the boards. I don't vote on the projects. So Gary's the chair. Gary's been the chair of the DRB for 40 years, maybe longer. Oh, yeah. Somewhere around there. So they approve the they approve development. Planning just writes the zoning, writes the rules. The DRB interprets the rules and approves the projects. I just staff both boards. Well, go ahead. Having sent out on a board through one of these already, God bless you, people. <laughs> hey, it's not an easy job. <laughs> I can't, I can't see it. What, one of the things I want to mention is that the, uh, in order for us to have downtown designation, and with the downtown designation comes grants and possibilities, we have to have a town plan. Right. So I'm, I sit kind of frustrated not knowing what we're going to be missing by continuing to postpone this process. I know, I know. Town plan expires. Uh, expired. When? I think it expires this spring. Okay. So, and, and we're not going to have this one processed until after hours expired that's what I'm which it does mean we lose money so and, that's, and, and, that's we also, and we also won't be able to change the zoning if we keep doing this so I, that's a concern i have that uh we're about to go into lock to uh, gridlock yeah mm -hmm. you want to read some of those yeah, okay. um sure yeah um there's just a few comments on the on the board um i think it's jess russell is saying um i agree that this needs more time for public input. Regardless of your thoughts on announcing this, it seems many people are unaware and want to participate. Um, and then Carol, is it Ladler? Lover. Lover. Says, uh, I agree that the wording at the end of page 23, on page 24 regarding the cost of village sewer, <coughs> village sewer plant upgrades be removed. So the same as uh, Laura. Laura and uh, Jimmy were saying. Uh, there are more direct ways to raise funds to support the village sewer system. Okay. Where do we want to go? The one change I'm making, we've heard from a majority of the select board, is to strike out the industry. Street. That's what I have so far to make changes tonight. Do we want to make any other changes? Uh, here. What was that? Uh, Striking by? Alexander Street. Alexander Street. Street. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's um, the one change I have. Um, the majority of the board agreed to. How do we agree about this subject issue? Or are we going to. Which one? The page 23 to 24. The sewers. The sewer. The sewer. Uh, I agree with him. I, would, I wouldn't want anybody else. I've been in the village and. Okay. I'll have to conserve or whatever, but uh, I'm not asking somebody. 10 miles down the road to pay. You want to sell my house and live, you sell your house and live at my I, I, house. I just, <laughs> I just don't know what the possibilities are of leaving, just leaving the language in there. It doesn't, doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean yeah, that we are going to be doing that. No, that's and I think right. it's in the town plan, it might be a possibility of, of some grant funding. Correct. That's one of the main points of the town yes. plan. That's and before you start changing sewer plant language, I, I would recommend you guys do work with the village trustees on that. Yeah, because that's going to be a, a major this issue. Lang this language, these paragraphs, were there, I think, five straight meetings, so two and a half months, we went over this language word by word, the planning council, with the trustees there, with public there. So this has been very well henpecked already, and I'm hesitant to change it the if it's not going to impact anything, as Judy says, at least not without working with the trustees jointly. It doesn't tie our hands. It doesn't say this is going to happen. And it gives you more options as a yes. select board. That's what yes. I said. I'd rather have more options. Yep. But um, he says something about changing the zoning, and that concerns me. Um, changing the zoning where we're on the inside. So, so can you recommend that we change the zoning? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we actually lose the ability to change our own land use laws, which would be very bad. So if you don't like the 136 unit development, I can't change the zoning to not allow something like that to happen again if we don't have a town plan. We're just stuck with more. Yeah, the town plan would address that eventually. Well, the town plan is in place in order for the zoning to actually detail, deal with that. I mean, but there's nothing, Kristen Fondal, I'm a member of Village Town of both, <laughs> consider myself both. It's my understanding, though, that um, the plan does not seek to change the high density residential right. district at no. all. No. So that's. Am I, am I, it doesn't speak to that kind of detail. Yeah. When the uh, Planning Council added HGR to Jersey Heights, I had recommended a requirement that uh, every unit kind of townhouse style have an entrance to the ground floor, which wouldn't have allowed a four or five story building. That didn't get approved. And that's something the Planning Council could revisit, which would basically make the uh, scale of the development smaller by everyone having a front door that access ground level. Uh, but that's a change we won't be able to do if we don't have a town plan. We can't do it at this point. We're, we're so close to the town plan expiring, I can't get zoning through at this point. So we're stuck with the rules as is unless we get the town plan through. So it's not about like having a piece of land and saying people can have an acre and another one an acre and an acre and not like two and a half acres or some well, sort of substantial space between I mean, in terms of zoning or maybe I'm off on a different topic. The, the, the town plan is really the foundation for your zoning bylaw. It's the best way to describe it. So the town plan, gives you your foundation, it's what you can talk about. In the zoning, you build your house on top of your foundation, that's enacting your goals and aspirations in your town plan. A town plan doesn't really do much. It's not, uh, it's an aspirational document. Uh, it only gets used as a legal document in court or Act 250 hearing for some contested part of the uh, of a development application. The rubber meets the road in the zoning bylaw. And the town plan is just the, the directional piece, the guiding the ship to actually the zoning bylaw as a navigational chart. If that analogy makes sense. So you did earlier say that up to almost 80% of the town plan than the last one was enacted. So this really is more of a binding document than it's being said just to say, well, we get more wiggle room here or there. Then. It's a guy. It, yeah, it's a guy. It's, a guy. it's, it's a, almost 80% of the last town plan was done. Right. right. Implementation chapter. And so. Implementation okay. chapter is three pages of the All right. so, pages. 65 through 68 or something like that. Go ahead. I would, I would expect of 65 and 68, whatever that is, implementation chapter, 60. So, okay, I, yeah, I know you know it, yeah. 62 through 68, I would expect half of that to get done as a general guess, hopefully a little more. So just, again, to go back to the point where the one line of reducing the minimum lot size as a guide mm -hmm. for the zoning bylaws to be adjusted within areas of the rural residential ag district. I really think that is uh, incongruous. It does not fit with the character of the town. And I think that's something to seriously consider removing from this is one line. And if that becomes the guide for the new zoning bylaws, then there goes the neighborhood. That line did go part, come partly from this board. And the intent of that line, from the way I understood it being directed to the planning council was, you're just looking at the close by areas right in proximity around the village. So you're not talking anywhere near where do you live. You're talking about right outside Jersey Way or just outside the village limits. You're talking about mm -hmm. just the, well, the parts of the town that touch the village right there. It's not talking about changing to allowing a one acre lot out in Mud City or Sterling Valley or anything like that. I well, think it should be defined then. Mm -hmm. and it should be it was well. it was more defined earlier, but uh, earlier changes this plan in the, and the previous public process, I mean the earlier public process, uh, actually want, wanted that to be less directive mm -hmm. and more up to interpretation. It's not binding. So that was right. how the language is today. Less so, binding. Originally, it said immediate, areas immediately adjacent to the village. And it was a, it was a public input that was taken out to give the town more flexibility. Yeah, we were asked to take it out. Exactly. <clears throat> so the same board created that language and asked me to take out the more specific language. So. I, I've I seen a lot of these statements that have been it. modified so many times. No, take it in. Oh, you're missing that. Oh, take that out. It's so like. So it sounds to me like we need to go to planning commission meetings and sit in on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where we all need to start. That's yeah. where. Y'all yeah. hear that? Yes. That's where Kristen. dinner is made. This is just serving up the bill. Yeah. Yes. Kristen, go ahead. So relatedly, I want to 
want to stress that I, I feel it is important to remove language about expanding the village line to perhaps those areas that you're talking about, making it one for lots. Um, it, it's mentioned in two sections, I noticed, in the implementation plan. So if we're looking at 80% gets enacted, that's pretty good, you know, that, that we're looking at expanding the village when people are clearly saying that it's not what we want for our town. I live in the village, I'm in the middle of the village, not, I'm in the medium density, and we have talked about what high density looks like for our neighborhood, and it changes it dramatically. If we're looking at Needle's Eye Road and we're looking at spot zoning, where there's a apartment building that has multi-units in it, or I, I don't know, is it, it's medium density right now, right? So like, it's, but it's not medium density because it's not zoned you know because what? it's rural. It's yeah. rural. It's, not it's rural. Place. But there's there's an apartment building on that road. So if you live on Needle's Eye Road and it's yeah. got it has more than two units right on Needle's Eye Road at the corner of Katie's Falls Road and Needle's Eye Road, there's an apartment building there. I live on the corner of Needle's Eye Road and there not Katie's an Falls Road, road and there is not an apartment it's building. It's a single there. family because it was listed for sale not long ago. Isn't it like oh, a that's Ward's old house up there on the hill. So, no, that's not an apartment building. That's a single family home. Okay, yeah. well, make sure that there's no no apartment buildings because they would have standing I, to rezone your area as a. I've been there all my life. <laughs> I know, and I'm not saying I'm not. I'm saying that is the that's the warning that happens for zoning changes when you're trying to expand the village. And I know that this is exhausting for you guys having to listen to it at this late hour, which is. You know, but it has to be said. So thank you for hearing us out, even though it's exhausting and you might have to hear it multiple times a week because you sit on more than one board. But not everybody attends all the meetings. It is important. Um, so I would like you to consider removing the language about expanding the village. While, you know, there are other ways to maintain, like get rid of the property that uh, assesses taxes or, you know, like accrues taxes. There's better ways to do it than just pushing the village line. So please consider it. I would have to agree with you. What do folks want to do? What's your Well, what are opinion? our options? Can I speak? Yeah, you, you, close your, you close the hearing and see what the bill, or village trustees do, and you're still, you can still meet and talk about it. Um, yeah. You just can't take more information if you close the hearing. Okay, so we can. You're not just, voting yet because you're voting. The voting takes place at a regular select board right, meeting. Right. So you can have, you can be like the planning commission, have 40 of these meetings at the next regular meetings, have a spot for on every agenda, and do that and, and vote on it when you're ready. Okay. okay. I think I think I'd like to have some time to digest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I speak? And and also, I, I wish the stuff was in writing because I. I can't contain all this stuff. I've read a lot of it now. I think okay, I'm good. I'm trying to find it as a plan. Thank you all. Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks for having a good night. So, uh, Laura is trying to say something. I think she wants to commit to you. Laura, can we hear? Yes. Go ahead, Laura. Um, so, I just want to be clear that what I heard uh, was that the select board um, wants to leave the language in because they feel that it will help them get a grant. So basically you're saying that we'll get a grant by agreeing to tax the town people and that you're passing it or you're not making a decision, you're gonna turn it over to the trustees who are all village people. So I'm unclear as to, is everybody on the select board? It didn't seem like uh, it was clear that, you know, it seemed vague. And I'm just, I think the voters need to know that, you know, who's for this and who isn't. A vague kind of is, I don't think is good. So I, I, you say you're not vote, but I think it would be nice to hear um, each of the select board members opinion, whether this should be left in or not. We, I know I want to digest it all more. I'm not ready to make a decision one way or the other. I'd like to talk to the trustees. You know, I know I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, you may not live in the village, but you go to all those businesses that operate in the village. That's one, that's one train of thought. If you 
patronize any of the restaurants, any of the um, any of the places in the village, whether, whether it's Chuck's Bikes or it's um, you know Power Play or it's Rock Art or it's or any of these places that you know you're still you have skin in the game, so to speak. And that, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's how I feel, but I know that that's what a lot of people say. And, and that language being left in there allows the select board to still have the flexibility to decide at a later date. So that's just, I don't know how I would vote. So, you know, I think we got to discuss it more. The Montpelier, yeah, would, um, the Montpelier Select Board, I didn't mean to interrupt, actually, because they do a citywide bond and that helps with the sewer plant upgrades, actually pump septic systems. It just gives you more flexibility. So right. the select board could pump septic systems right. as part of this if they wanted to go down that road. I'm right. not saying to go down that road. Hey, but you, just, it's about not time. Yeah, you want to come pump mine and take care of my whole system? That's they great. They can know. come pump mine too, Laura. Yeah, well. Right, I'm with I'm with Bob too. I don't I don't fully understand the um, all the implications of it and and to me also it doesn't say that Town residents would be taxed um, equally to village residents or right. charged equally. So maybe there's just some sort of like a village use surcharge fee. I don't, again, I don't know. I, I certainly don't want to offset, you know, the cost of my home sewer here, <laughs> my, you know, because I live right. in the village. I don't want to, that's not what I'm looking to do. But again, I can't vote on that without more information. Yeah. I think we need to discuss it more yet again. One, one concept, having been involved in a public utility for most of my life, uh, public service board under their rulings and under state rulings, they have a very simple philosophy. The user pays. Okay. So if you use the system, you pay for the system. People in the, outside of the village, other than coming to a restaurant, don't use the system. The restaurant uses the system for their clientele. They charge two cents a meal for the bathroom with the account, right. accounting that. See what I'm saying? That's all right. Oh, yeah. The I user know. pays. I agree I with know. that. Absolutely. The town doesn't need to contribute anything to the village on that. But that's, that's the public service board philosophy that we had to live with in the phone. That's but it, it doesn't mean that if we have the town plan that, it, that it's going to happen. What it means is if it's in there, and if there's money available because it's in our town plan, then we can possibly help off, help offset the cost. And that's what I'm looking at. Gives us the ability. A possibility. Yeah, yeah. That, that could very well be the, be the case with you. I, I don't know. None of us do. No. But the thing is, I think what the town residents are concerned about, if it's in the town plan, then it gives you the leeway to go ahead and do right. it. Right. And I, sometimes things get done that not everybody knows about. I think it's like we're right now we're paying for the, sep the septic, the sewer system in Hyde Park. The taxpayers in our town are paying for that. Oh, you're paying for the water system. Well, right. we're paying the we're paying system. for water in some way, yeah. shape, or form that we're not using. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. not go down that road. So, <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. That's, a, know. that's a Pandora's is. box on yeah, its own. I'm just saying, the philosophy under the Public Service Board in the state of Vermont for a long time has been the user pays. Right. We used to do line extensions in the phone company for a mile, never charge the customer. Public service board says, time out, you can't do that anymore. You know, you get one poll, after that, you start paying. Right. Because you're creating the expense. So if I go down to your house and drink too much, and I come back to the village of Morrison and use their septic system, the user pays. There you go. Okay. So, so wait, can I well, make a motion to end this part of the meeting? That would be great. I'd like to uh, make a motion to end the part of the um, ten year plan discussion. Ten year plan discussion. Thank you. You closing the hearing? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? I second. That. Second by Jess. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are now out of the 10 year plan discussion and into the regular portion of the select board meeting. Would you like a pie to break? Okay, we'll take a short recess for facilities. Minutes of December 20th. 2021. Well, I do have three additions to your agenda. But oh, yeah, you you said there was two. Yeah. Go ahead with those. So I, I separated out two of them because they're 
both for the rescue squad. Yeah. The first one is a point volunteer rescue member to part-time paid status. Do we have something that in our packet? We don't. No. I have a motion. Do okay. You? Yep. The other uh, change pay status for one rescue member. I'll explain that when we get to it. Okay. And change the authorized representative for the, I'll give you the acronym, CLFRF, which is the Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funding, CLFRF. Okay. <laughs> Easy for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So now, yeah, approve the minutes of December 20th. Do I have a motion regarding those? Excuse me. The, the, for the 20th, I just wanted to question is the, um, the rescue way that it's typed on the minutes, how it will be on the article for the half cent request for the confirmation motion? Is that typically how it's written, a dollar sign in front of a half and then cent? Yeah. That is how it's written? That's usually how it's written. Okay, because it was just slightly confusing. We weren't sure if that was how. Yeah. Like the half cent, the dollar sign, half cent. Right. Yeah. Because we just wanted to make sure it wasn't like right. it was construed that we're asking for, I don't know, $12? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like it's, I, well, maybe in parentheses you put what half cent is, whether it's 30 to that. I'll take a look at it. I took it off another motion, so I'll, I'll take a look and see. Okay. It. I just, I don't know. We yeah. wanted to bring it up before it got it. Thank you. Thank I, you. you know, I don't remember it looking like this on, no. on mornings before. And I don't no. think it's how yeah. we had put it on mm -hmm. our previous our like petition yeah. request not that that was what ended up being right. used but but also people need to know what a half cent is you know they need this right. needs to be yeah. a value that's why i say put the value in parentheses you know yeah. like a roughly we don't know yeah, well but they tell me we don't know what the value of a half cent is because we don't know until the grand list in the right but you could at least put the previous year last year's was Thirty-two thousand four four hundred. You know what I mean? Oh, it would all park a lot closer than twelve dollars and fifty-five cents. We actually know? in the town plan differently. Um, I have just seen it. Sorry, I think we, I'm just we remembering. We answer now. those questions too at the meeting. Yeah. Maybe in maybe in written words, you know, put it in numeric numeric, numeric values. Terms, sure. Have, to have it in written language, just so people can see it both ways and make sure they understand. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had a motion. Who seconded that? <coughs> Moving a minute. Gary seconded. So any further discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are passed. Sorry, I didn't say aye, but I meant it. Okay. Well, we had three in it. <laughs> <laughs> now the minutes of December 27th, 2021. I move to accept them with the addition of uh, the administration and staff, I think you should ask Corey Bohair and Colby Massey were here. Oh, yes. Good call. I have a motion by Gary. Did I have a second? Jess, did I have a second? Yes, second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye on those. Aye. aye. Any I'm, opposed? I'm abstaining. Okay. Can I abstain? Is you, that you may. I mean, but that was only yeah, you weren't here, right? But you weren't here. Right. Okay. Yeah, so three, three, three is fine. Vote? Okay. Yeah, the motion is passed. All right. Okay. So next we have community concerns. Do we have uh, community concerns? Before, uh, before you go any further, mm -hmm. I'd like to start the new year off with an apology. I'd okay. like to apologize publicly for my comment at the last board meeting about the cost of living increase referring to our president. I feel it was inappropriate on my part, but the select board member has not apologized. I want to thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. All right, so was that a community concern? <coughs> Almost. Whatever you want to take it. Do we have any community concerns tonight, other than that? Do we have Tom. Ma'am, could you t say your name and? Yeah. My name is Jennifer Andrews. I live over on Vanessa Road. And um, it seems to me that density um, is becoming overwhelming in Morristown, specifically the, the village. I have asked people that I know and um, who have been passing through town 
the question of uh, what they think of what's happening uh, that's new. And um, everyone I have spoken to is overwhelmed by the size and number of these apartment buildings. They all recognize the need for housing, but this has all come too fast and too many. I personally find that it's so disappointing that even in the historical district of our village, that there are no architectural details that would actually lend themselves to that idea. I have seen no dedicated green space, and I have been at meetings with Grant to make I have seen no dedicated green space at any of these buildings that would allow for any type of recreation near their home to occur. When you have people who are so densely living together, there must be a dedicated area on the premises to let them play. Otherwise, our police, our fire, and our EMS will become overburdened. There has got to be changes in the way we do business to address this egregious mistake. It needs to be, I believe it needs to be halted, but at least it needs to be slowed way down. Thank you. I, I, Jennifer, I, I, I really hear you and I think why one of the reasons why so many people are coming out to the town planning meeting is because of that, because of all the building going on and people are frustrated and upset and they don't know what to do and they don't know where to go. Um, and, and part of it is some of it is a lack of communication. And, and you might have heard Chad say there's this three tier <coughs> approach to our government. We have the planning commission, which does do all of the zoning. And then you have the DRB that implements the zoning and, and oversees that. And then you have us who get the information kind of at the last, uh, not last second, but we're the last piece right, of the, the puzzle. Yes. Right, right. And But we're the more visible ones. Um, but I, I you. <laughs> but I, I think I that, do go, to, I have gone to planning commission meetings. I've never gone to a DRB meeting. Um, I, I um, I think people are frightened yes. that our little village of Morrisville um, is changing yes. in a very destructive way. It's and interesting because my son is a, a, a town planner. Um, his specialty is in uh, transportation. And so he was just here at Christmas. He's come at Thanksgiving and so on. And I have been picking his brain um, and asking him what he sees and how things are going. And I. And talking to him, I have a different perspective than I did before. Um, but I think it's something um, we really need to have more of an educational um, component to what we're doing, because it, I didn't I didn't understand what was going on. Unfortunately, it's done now, and people are are angry. Yes, and uh, yes. there's no way to undo it. Yes, and the trust has been broken. Yes, and so trying to get back to a place where people can take a breath and yeah. be willing to trust and work together again is going to be a long, hard road, I'm afraid. I think if there's some some kind of, 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 of forum for the community to, to talk, like we had uh, before Arbors was um, reconfigured, and we had a big town, uh, not a town meeting, I can't remember what you call it, but a group came in and talked with us as a group a whole, and then many of us broke off into small so sections. That's a communication. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and I think that needs to happen so people can air their grievances, and then also hear what the uh, what information is out there. Why did the development go as it did, and and uh, is there anything we can do right now to make some changes that are positive? And please know that I appreciate all of the incredible amount of time and energy that goes into being in a. Uh, an effective select board uh, member and other town um, commission as I'm on one too. And uh, it, it's a thankless job and you do the best you can. 
but I think it, I think our town um, and the village really need to come together and and talk to each other. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to make a comment. I was hoping you would. Uh, <laughs> the building in the historic district, I assume you're talking about the LHP building over here, and that when that is completed, the outside of that structure, the permits require them to have the, the cornices around the corner, uh, around the top of the building, uh, match the ones on Main Street. Also, they're required to have windows that look the same as uh, our downtown. And at the last, when they came back for final <coughs> approval, they were required to put a business in the bottom floor, the same as the rest of the buildings on Main Street. Uh, Nick Gonzo Development is down on Bridge Street. Uh, I think probably a half to two thirds of that is dedicated open space. And there's parking spaces within the development set aside for people to go there, walk the trails that are going to be constructed within the development. Uh, Grand Mix, 136 unit, is a public uh, picnic area design down next to the river with trails going through those areas. Uh, Bourne's subdivision outside of town, gate law subdivision there, over half of that, or just half of that, is uh, <coughs> conserved land, dedicated open space, which with trails going down to the right or up. So there is concessions made by all of these developers. Uh, and most of them out uh, there, uh, we have, a, to my best my knowledge, we've never had any kickback of providing open space and green spaces. Uh, they put up bike racks, they do whatever they're conditioned to do by the DRB. And, and the DRB which goes over these, uh, takes a lot of testimony, and again, I heard Bob telling uh, Patricia earlier this evening that it's great to have the people come here so you get better ideas of what's going on. And I get chastised from time to time as part of the DRB for allowing too much testimony to, for people going off on a tangent when they I start giving testimony. And I, I allow that until it starts getting redundant because a lot of people, such as yourself, if you were at a meeting uh, of what she was very mean, uh, as a look at closer, uh, if you had some better ideas uh, to make his project look better in your eyes or in the town's eyes, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And not everybody likes the same thing. He was uh, made to put uh, porches on the buildings next to Bridge Street down here. It's also designed, the end building is also designed like the building was up here on the corner of uh, <coughs> Brooklyn Street and Main Street. Uh, not Brooklyn, but Portland. Portland Street and Brooklyn Street. The original building has got that round silo on the end of it. That was part of the conditions of his permit to get, to get those buildings done. So I, I think the boards are looking at, you know, preserving uh, the history of Marcel and trying to create um, a good, actually, Bridge Street is the gateway to Marcel, in my opinion, because it comes off the bypass. That was one of the main reasons for constructing, for requiring the silo type to match older buildings that were in town. Well, just as someone who's looking around at the apartment buildings that are going up, they just look like big boxes to me, and it's difficult for me to discern any, you know, particular um, well, I don't, special you know, yeah, I'm not attributes that they have. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh, but also, everybody wants to make affordable housing. 
and I'm not sure what that is. And it changes my opinion, it changes every day. I mean, we just talked about it. I mean, people people been selling their houses and their land for exorbitant prices. Well, it's going to come back to bite us with a common level appraisal because we've been under taxing by about 14 percent. So when the new appraisal comes around, you can expect your taxes to go up probably 14 percent. But well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I mean it's it's a double-edged sword, you know. We think we're doing a big truck of business by selling our house for a few times its value. Then you end up paying on the other end. But again, to to address your concerns, I, you're more than welcome to come to any DRB meeting that we have there as required the first and third Thursdays of the month and or yeah, first and third or second, fourth, um, <coughs> Next one's the 12th. I'm doing all the yeah, yeah. second. So, uh, and it is. A, a, it's, there's, just, there's so much to it, and we try to listen to everybody's concerns and and have to follow the zoning regulations on top of that. And that's why you're finding all this development because the town and the planning commission decided that the south end of town was right to change from medium density residential to high density residential and that's that's why we're getting what we got. The developers are taking advantage of the rules. They're, they're not they're not breaking any rules. They're you know they're doing what they're required to do. Right. And, and as a DRB the DRB tries to um, to help in that situation and make sure all the buildings are constructed you know the best we can. I mean, we have a bit, very diversified board. We have an architect on board, and um, so you know, we take a, yeah. take a look at a lot of those. And, so, uh, and it is that helps. it is good to go along with Gary said. <clears throat> like any of these buildings in the, in the historic district, they have to have like the facade, the original facade, and cornices and windows and everything. Like like uh, Power Play Sports Building that, when that was renovated, the post office building, the Arthur's building. Um, even um, even uh, Bourne's, Bourne's office building is a brick building. That had to be done a certain way, so it was matched the character of the town. And I know it seems like a lot of people say, well, these are all just boxes. They don't look like they're, they belong here, you know. But like that building he's talking about on Hutchin Street, the Memorial Housing Partnership building, that is when it's going to be done. It's going to look a lot different than a big plywood box. And because I remember, because it's uh, way bigger than the it's city. taller than everything up there. I know it's way out of place, very out of character. Right. And I, I think of you know when you follow the green line in Lawrenceville, yeah. uh, do the history walk. There's a the mustard colored house that is now green that has all those apartment buildings, buildings behind it. Offices. Pardon? The Scrimmings offices. Um, uh, those are just big boxes, and they're in the, in the, by the Green Line Walk. You mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. not attractive to see all that stuff in the right. historic district. So. Right. right. And thank you for listening. I, and I, I agree with you, um, Jennifer. I think um, I think we're maybe having a, a a difference of value, or like maybe what Gary's saying, like beauty is an aspired beholder. And I really commend the DRB for. Um, um, requiring certain um, aesthetic um, <clears throat> aesthetic requirements for these um, developments. Um, I would like to understand more um, around um, how um, regularly those requirements are um, instituted, or you know, like, are is 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 it on a case by case basis, or is it across the board? Is it based on whether a building is a, a historical? Renovation, or if it's a new building, or where it is in the village, um, I think it would go a very long way if there was a facilitated um, communication between people in town and um, key members of the boards um, to talk about um, green spaces and setbacks and sight lines. Um, it just talk about how we're going to do this high density development moving forward in a way that um, preserves the character of our downtown. Um, because yeah. I think, like you said, like the things that you mentioned, I think are are like really great examples of how we can do both. 
and I do, but I also, and I, and I think like the townhouses behind, um, uh, on Foundry Street are, are pretty tasteful, you know, like I, I think those like do add, um, those do in my eyes look like nice places to live, you know, and I hear what you're saying too, there's a, a push and pull between affordable housing and, and beautiful aesthetics, but, um, I, I, don't understand myself if if, it, if there's um, just a few like some zoning changes or requirements that we could um, look at going forward around um, setbacks and green spaces and um, you know certain aesthetics that we deem are like um, would keep the character of our town a little more. Well, Jessica, well, thank you for saying that in a much nicer way. <laughs> oh, I think I think we probably just paraphrased what you said. But I mean, like again, we try to adhere to the zoning regulations. But I mean, those the setbacks and the green spaces, all that stuff is all set by the the planning commission. Right. We just follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Well, but and, but like we every belt required to have a street tree every fifty feet or sixty feet on center uh, sidewalks, Bridge Street area. There's no setback. It's the sidewalk is a setback. Yeah, that's not, I, then, to me. That's like where you say Bridge Street is now the, um, the gateway. The gateway to Morrisville. Yeah. That's the thing that really I think sets it apart is that there's no setback. And I think yeah, when you look down that street, you start to feel like I live in New York City. You know, you start to feel like and that's this, and that's and what you, and that's what you have to think about. Yeah. When I was talking to my son about this. That's what you think about if you let's go look at Boston and the brownstones. Yeah. They're built right up to the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and so there is there are places for that those type of buildings, and there is places for um, buildings that have more of a yard around. But, so, a, but a all brownstone that. has a beautiful stoop to hang out on. I mean that is the public space, mm -hmm. right? Like that is the public mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Of that. But we could we could so we that, could, you know, we debate this for the rest of the night. I think we should just keep moving on right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know Tom had a. How do how do the planning board people get on that board? It's they they off uh, they uh, volunteer to uh, to. If there's a vacancy, board. it's advertised, and then then you can. And, and that's that's and another problem. Who chooses them to go on the, board. the DRB. They recommend them. They to recommend them to us, and we approve them. So, so the, yeah. plan, the people on the planning board are your responsibility because you put them there. That's true. Yeah, but they make they make they all make, the decisions. That we well, don't tell we them what to do. We, we don't tell them what to do. We vote people in the Congress too. We don't tell them exactly what to do. Exactly. We very rarely that. go against what they decide I and, and that. recommend us. No. It has happened though. A, a good example of that is the, the zoning density change that happened up on Elmore Street, yeah. where it was medium density, and all the folks that lived there came and said, "We want it." reduced to light density and it was overwhelming so we did it and in and, and that in that section there because they were worried about the, the build out of you know the developers take a look at the half acre lots and they say oh we could put three buildings up here you know that started to happen so we made changes right that's, so. that's what i understand from speaking with Todd earlier is that we can look at this town plan and we can propose a change in zoning in, in, on the software is yeah that correct that's correct. Okay, so it's not totally out of our purview. No, we right? can we can go to those meetings too, and we can. Well, no, I'm just, I'm saying as as part of the select board, we can make those changes as well. It's not just the DRB. No, we can. The planning planning commission, makes planning planning commission makes those changes. Yeah. We can be at the meetings and suggest, just like anybody else can. Yeah. But we can't. We. We can suggest that. And if it comes to us, and we can vote no yeah. if we don't like it. But right. Or if we're outvoted. Yeah. I've gone to several of those meetings, uh, planning commission meetings, where mine wasn't the best idea, apparently, because it didn't go through. So it's all part of the democratic process. But thank you for your input. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, I'll call out my concerns to some other meetings. <laughs> and you haven't heard any ATVs lately, have you, Tom? I have not. I was going to say, Jason will hear. Come this spring when they come down there again, I'll be talking. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me bringing up that three three letter word. Thanks, Bob. I know. I know. 
But I have to tell you, every time I see you, I think of that, you know? Sorry about that. That's a good thing. Okay. All right, is there any other community concerns? Hearing none, we'll move to approve the warrants. Do you want to uh, well, pick want up the three items? Well, it's, yeah, we can do that. Just, I'm just... Go ahead, we'll appoint the member. Yeah, so the, the first one uh, is uh, Jason Tallin. I think Bill is on. Bill Mace is on tonight. Hi, can you hear me? Hey, Bill. Hi, hi, Bob. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for not being there in person. Um, so with uh, Colby coming on uh, full time from our part time staff that uh, left us with a part time vacancy, uh, we had previously uh, interviewed Jason Tallman for that slot um, when uh, we last had a part time opening. Uh, we opened it up to our volunteer members. Jason was the only one who applied. Uh, and uh, we're we're very happy. Uh, we would be very happy to have Jason uh, uh, join us uh, as a uh, uh, as a part time member of the squad. He's been a long time volunteer um, and uh, very uh, very deserving of coming on and uh, joining our career staff. Okay, so there's a motion here. And send it on to Gary. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Now how about the change page status? Change page status is reference to Peter Fitz. Take it away, Bill. Thank you. Uh, Peter Fitz uh, has uh, been a part-time member of our career staff uh, for uh, going on a couple of years uh, this time around. Uh, Peter has been working as a provisional paramedic uh, under a provisional certification from National Registry and from the state of Vermont. Uh, he's used that time to uh, pass his uh, National Registry uh, practical exams. Uh, and he has spent the last year uh, in preceptorship with uh, myself and with uh, Chris Clement. Uh, this uh, past week, uh, uh, Peter was released uh, by uh, Liam Gannon, our district medical advisor, for uh, uh, to come off of provisional status and to have full clinical practice within the EMS district. So uh, Peter is now available to us as a... Uh, as a uh, fully certified, no longer a provisional paramedic, uh, and we need to increase his uh, his hourly rate to reflect that. Okay, you have a motion for that? I move to increase Peter Fitz's hourly rate of pay to $19.53 per hour to reflect his new paramedic level certification. I have a motion by Gary, do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next to CLFRS. Yes, yeah, so those are ARPA funds. It's just a, it's another acronym. Okay. So uh, what has come to our attention is we assign different roles within the ARPA funding. Uh, you were assigned, Bob, as the uh, authorized representative. Woo I, I knew that. Yeah, we almost bought you a baseball hat, but we didn't quite, so we stopped there. It's yeah. Too expensive. So uh, the authorized representative has to be present in order to upload the reports uh, required through the ARPA program. Oh, you're lucky. I had to create an account and Tina dumped yeah. your password. Yeah, so that has become problematic because it's just availability and when the reports do their due. So what we're suggesting is that we change uh, for the authorized representative from you to me. Okay. Since I'm here. No, aren't you already something anyway? You're you're one of the other. Yeah, I, now I have gatekeeper, two, two the hats, key master. But I'm not buying all hats either. But I'm just yes, that's some sort of. Okay. Yeah. But I'm all so, for that. So this uh, <laughs> this is simply changing you, uh, officially changing you from uh, authorized representative to me being that, and it's a reporting piece only. There's no no other implication here. Just that I get to log in and make the change. So that's fine with me. Keeping on the the reports. Are you ready to relinquish your... Oh, yes, I am. 
I you only did one thing. Right I only created an account and a password. <laughs> then I gave it to Dean anyway. <laughs> okay, I move that we change the town authorized representative for coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding from Bob Beeman to Eric Dodge, town administrator. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion is passed, but I abstain from the vote. <laughs> All right, is that it? That's it. Okay, approve the warrants. Do I have a motion to approve the warrants? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The warrants are passed. <clears throat> Next, TA report. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Through the holiday season, the staff here um, had a, a little bit of a slowing of uh, work uh, requests from the public, which was nice to give them a chance to breathe and spend some time with their families. Uh, they took advantage of that and uh, have come back with big smiles on their faces and successful and safe holiday season. So we're ready to go for 2022. Sounds good. That's it. I'll tell you yeah. That's all. Any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Select board concerns. Gary. No, I, no concerns, I guess. Okay. I have Judy? none. Jess? Um, I just want to um, understand the process that we'll use to um, decide on the town, the town plan language. I just, what, where, where are we going from here? <laughs> I think we got, we have to decide if we're going to strike any of those other other things. Yeah. There's three more, I think. There's three that we're, we're talking about. The one that Kristen was talking about. And um, there's a couple other ones. The sewer. Sewer. The sewer. sewer. And the Alexander Lane. There you go. Uh, and then. Um, well, Alexander, when we did, we, we did. removed that language. There was one, but there was one more. And then the, the fellow gave you that printout. The, the, the yes. Um, oh, the highway lane. Yes. The, the passing lane. Right. So That's we need to discuss language. that. I thought there was something yeah. else and there was the something on the um the, the lot Anchorage, yeah. Anchorage. Yeah. yeah. The lot the the yeah. yeah. And he had, he had written something given yeah. to you. Yeah. Do you have that? I took a photo of him with my phone and then I sent it in the back. He gave it That's to me. Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. So we have it. Can so I guess you're it? you're right. We need to decide. We Can need to talk about it. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. The, uh, Thank you. What came out of the meeting, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if anybody or everybody's completely aware of it, but so the 80,000 square foot uh, represents two acres. Right. right. 40,000 represents one acre. Right. So the town plan is speaking to reducing the requirement from a two acre zoning requirement to a one acre zoning requirement in those affected areas. So that's. Right. In case folks didn't understand that. No, I did. Yeah, where, where I did. Just the abutting of the village. Oh, so around the... Uh, <clears throat> the blue line is the village line. Yeah. Right. Uh, does, it, does the village line... I'm sorry, you missed that one? Does the village line sh follow streets? Yeah. No. 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 No, it doesn't. No, it does. It does it follow lot lines. Harold Street, it does. Yeah. The Harold Street. Yeah, I don't, that's, that blue line is not the village line. The blue, the blue line is the village blue line. Blue line is a short service area, right. I believe. Yeah. Right. Uh, because the village line comes, I don't know, comes across here, because we're in the center of Harold Street. It should be denoted on that. Yeah, the, the blue line here says sewer service. Yeah, sewer service management, management area. area. Yeah. Yeah, the, the village line comes down the center, but it comes across. That legend doesn't show the village line. It does, but it comes across here. The one on mine does. I'm pulling it up. Yeah, I've got one too. It does. <clears throat> the brick street across. Yeah, then I was trying to think. Uh, so Colonial Knowles isn't in the village? Colonial Manor is not in the village, no. My house is the last one in the village. Okay. So, the budding of the village, 
with what type of what with what um they just want to change uh from two acre well, to one but, acre. But I understand they want to change the, from two acre zone into one acre zone. And I think what brought most of it on was uh dirty way the village line is right. Gee, it would be great to have a big map like that. Yeah. 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 I thought it would. It would. I thought there was another well, one over here. But that's the village zoning map. So you have to keep, no. keep that in there? The, we haven't decided. Down to one acre. We, we haven't, haven't decided. decided. Okay. No. But I think it would be good, like Jess says, to have those three things that we haven't decided on yet. What I'll have Todd do is... Talk to Todd about it. Yeah, so the, the 10 year town planning is a guiding document. The planning council would have to suggest the change in a specified area for the right. two acres down to one acre, right. which would then come to you annually when Todd presents the proposed zoning changes. Right. And then the board would review those changes and decide which ones you agreed with and didn't agree with. Right. So it offers you an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. It gives you the, a little more flexibility as far as, as he was talking about as housing requirements expand for the village that there would be a proposal coming from the planning council up through the process. So it'd be on a case by case basis? It would, there would be a proposed zoning area. And I can ask Todd if there are any areas that are already talked about, because some of them are restricted by ge geography. So, um, well, you know, if there- One of the ones that was talked about is um, across from Rock Art Brewery. That yes. Okay. Uh, okay. That's right. That, yeah. Okay. That the Chung, Betty Chung property. Yeah, and change that because Belange's property is already built out to two acres only, mm -hmm. and they were talking about changing uh, this area here to one acre zone. So this is like quarter acre, go to one acre, and then this would be two acre. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk to Todd about it. Being in the town plan, nothing in the town plan is set in stone that has to be completed by the folks. It's simply a consideration, leave some uh, ideas. Planning council is a visionary council. They, they look at the long-term growth and potential needs of the village and the town. So some of these things, uh, there's, there's more to it than sometimes comes out of the meeting. I don't know on the sewer issue, one of the issues that, that didn't come out, the thing that didn't come out was the fact that well, and I'm a, I live in the town as well. I'm not on the village sewer. However, my property taxes are kept lower by the influx of growth on the commercial and retail district side of the town right. that are on that sewer district. So uh -huh. while I want growth, responsible growth in those areas that would add users that would increase the tax base and the grand list in town, I understand that that is to my advantage as a homeowner in the town. Even not, though I'm not a user of the village system, my property taxes and the grand list growth, that, that helps. So there are some advantages to town taxpayers that are not on the system to having the village water and village septic system in place and expand, expand it as we did right. out on Herald Street. We took in Butternut Mountain Farms. And Concept that, Doom. That concept too. Uh, they had mm -hmm. required open space there for a, for a secondary septic zone. Exactly. And when that water, sewer line was extended out Harold Street, and it ends right at the Industrial Park Drive on Harold Street. Yeah, and then it goes up. In the, then it goes into the Industrial Park. Yeah. Butternut Mountain Farms was able to grow their factory and their warehousing on that property substantially which yeah the concept substantially good, increased the grand list value well we put up solar array that was right over our leach oh, field yeah so and then chris chris on the other end of the properties that are on the front on 15 you know and turtle fur too right. all those so properties the, so there there are pluses and minuses there are definitely pluses and minuses and, and all those come into play yeah so. it's not as simple as i think as long think. as what's in the town plan isn't hamstringing us it's it's a there are options it's a guy that we can say yay or nay to there are and, and it, there are so many processes built into town government for review and, and review and review right so that those measures have been taken into account as far as planning council develops ideas and and they look at zoning 
uh, is, is it that is a living document, or is only bylaws a living document? Because right. the needs of the community and its growth change, so it does, they don't ever stay right. the same. So uh, all of those things are guiding things, but the select board is the final approving authority. Mm -hmm. Planning Council develops an idea, and then once that is approved by you, then the DRB enforces those zoning bylaws. So there is a tremendous amount built into law that governs how these things come up through and get reached final approval, and at any step in there, that people can really raise their voice. Well, that's why I get frustrated because I think so many people put so much weight on that what it says in that town plan, and it really, it should be the town vision or something like that, the town guidance, not the town plan. Everyone thinks it got to be in there if you're going to do it, and that's it. And you know how many times I've heard that. Also, I mean, it is. Uh, th that's what's confusing about it is because it's a town plan, and the right, back, and that's it. You got to well, do no. it. Well, and then there's an implementation, yeah. implementation yeah. plan, so it is. Yeah. But it isn't. <laughs> I know. But Todd said eighty percent of the last town town plan was implemented. So, but we I still have contradictory. I, I'm not saying that. Yes. I'm not saying that what you're saying is incorrect. I'm just I, I, I see an inherent contradiction here that isn't really. Be but because it's written there doesn't mean that it's. You got to do it. You got to do it. Right, but it's. I I do understand the concern with many people that if it is written there, there's a good chance that it will happen. You're it's, you're right on the money. Yeah. Right. You're right so, on. That's where I I share some concerns, or I and I and I am amenable to looking a little farther into them. I don't want to prolong this process any more than it needs to be. Really, I don't. But um, mm -hmm. I look at it as a special educator writing an IEP. Yeah. And we write we write the IEPs. We have goals and objectives. This is what we'd like to do. But a lot of times we don't get there. Things get in the way. The goals and objectives didn't work. And so we have to t find another route. Yeah. And that's why I look at this as a, a guideline for us to look at. And, mm. and is it advantageous three years down the road? Should we be doing this? And we go, oh, this isn't in our best interest. Right. So it's, it's a path for us, but it doesn't, it's not <clears throat> set in stone. Yeah. The, the, the track lanes trafficability, Todd, uh, is the author of the planning council, looks at this from the elevation of 100,000 feet down. Mm -hmm. So they don't see the, the town lines. What they see is we do have um, a portion of our population here that uh, commutes to Chittenden County uh, for higher rates of pay and better business and better jobs that sometimes are available in, the, in a larger metropolitan areas. We are about a one hour commute from anywhere in the Burlington area. That has become accepted. People don't mind driving an hour, especially when they can come up here and the housing is more affordable here than Chittenden County, and it's more rural and more residential, and uh, they enjoy it here. The, the more you increase your commute time through traffic slowing, then you make us less of an option for those folks to look at. They're going to look closer to the interstate and not as close to us. So, it, it, some of the, this is when they've been looking at these things, they're taking all of this into factoring all this into. What, it, what is best for our growth here in Morrisville and what impacts it. So it doesn't stop at the town lines. It does have broader reaches, but hey, you know, it's, it's a document that you folks have to mm -hmm. approve. So that's the great part about it. There's lots of different hands in this already. That's not a great part. That's a bad part. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad I wasn't intending to get past this. I wasn't get past if I get back into the discussion of all the points, I was just wondering if, um, if it's when we do um, approve it, like, and is there any further discussion? In the next we need meeting? to talk about it with Todd before. Yeah. Okay. That's what we need to do. I think we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision on those items, those three or four items that were brought forward. Right. Yeah. Whether I think it seems to me from what Todd said, if we remove them, it's you don't have to. You don't have to. Right. If, if we add, add something, you know, then we have. Then if we it's have considered to a significant change. Yeah. Right. And taking removing something does not consider something a significant change. And then are you going to have a meeting where people are that on like an informational meeting? Right. Except, you know, well, that, because there's many times, and I understand you have to advertise these things. But obviously, people have to get in there. No, they don't. So, I mean, but they don't know where to look to get it. Facebook and every place else, and then it's just, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. I think I can show you where the village room is because the, in the town plan, it's, it is marked on the key. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. It would be easier to see there if you want me to do it. Yeah. But um, so it does follow the the colored in spacing green, which is the, the low density yeah, residential yeah. two and one, and then goes along the sewer line from Randolph Road to Beacon Hill across Beacon Hill, up, and then goes to the outside. Yeah, across there, following. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Up there. And then no, to continuing. The village line. Well, I'm looking at it. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. And then it goes. And then it goes. Um, it does not then follow the blue, the sewer line north. Continue to the left. It goes by to Mac the north, Miller? east, or northwest. Not quite to Mac Miller. It goes to the Katie's Falls Road, up. Oh, over here. Yep, and then yeah. all the way up to the low density residential yeah. four. And then it follows that um, the Needles Eye Road back round to Route 15, but like more down. You can kind of see it here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but then it goes down through the commercial zone to Harold Street, like you said. Yeah. Like not all the way on the road. Yeah. But it's like over there. But Wilkins well, Street is yeah. included in the, yeah. And yeah, and then it just goes right across. So <coughs> currently, it's um, considered rural. Rural residential. Rural residential, and yeah. it would be up. It would be increased. It would be increased to low density. Okay. okay. Well, we'll figure that stuff out. Talk to Todd. We take those three items and give them to Todd and say, "Look, what's the significance of these?" Then give it to us separately, and we can say what we think. Thank you, I, I do agree with, with not extending the village one. Yeah. I think there's there's some reason reason. somebody said it earlier tonight. The best way would be for the town, for the village to sell those lots or give them to the town. Yeah, yeah Ron said that. At least, at least back the, yeah. I'm fine with that too. Because I don't, I don't think we ought to lose both these terms. That's variable, very valuable. We start. We could start bottling water and water and selling it. <laughs> and I think it's the whole point of the low density, or sorry, the high density housing is that we will concentrate the development in the downtown. I don't think we need to sprawl the downtown yet. You know, I think that's something we need to do. So any of there's three of us, we could we could say that. I don't know if you guys. But anyways, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah. One second, yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right now adjourn.